Oh, damn it. that I lost is recovered enough. It usually only was getting bad when I would get really up there with volume, but it seems yeah. like, you know, I haven't been screaming or anything, but we'll see, you know? Play yeah, you're sounding, pretty, uh, you're sounding pretty grim and gritty. You know? All right. y- your, your voice right now is what Nolan strives for in his uh, realistic Batman film. Right. That was... <laughs> Hyper-realistic, yes. Yeah. Hyper-realistic. Can we talk about how, like, all of Nolan's films start the exact same fucking way, though? We like, can. All, all of them? All of them? <laughs> Wasn't last episode the one where we went into Tenet yeah. immediately? <laughs> uh, yeah, I realize, I realize now, like, in hindsight, like, looking back, I wish I would have made a joke about us inverting the podcast. I wish we would have done Tenet, Mandalorian, and then news in its right. entirety, completely backwards, completely inverted. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> reverse in, in entropy. Honor, yeah, re- we, we could have reversed entropy the podcast. Yeah, that just feels, end it on a cold that, that open. It would be really weird, but it would just, just to <laughs> yeah, stick yeah. with the lore, sort of. But for real, though, fuck that movie yeah. and fuck Christopher Nolan. And yeah. my hatred of that film has only grown over time. Like, it's getting worse, and I didn't even watch it again. Um, I watched it more times. I watched <laughs> it more times. <laughs> I, I don't know why you did that. I got really I got really high and watched it. I was like, maybe this will fix it. <laughs> no, that sounds like it would make <laughs> it so much worse. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. I, uh, but, but I'll, I'll say this: like I actually did giggle at a car driving backwards. I laughed hysterically at the people running backwards and like dragging their feet, like dragging their comrades. You know, yeah. like uh, so stupid looking. They look, they look nah. ridiculous. The, the, the guy crawling down the hallway is still the worst. Like, 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 and they want uh, yeah, yeah, like, like, to breathe. You have to breathe backwards when you're reverse at the breathe. So like, do you do you, do you shit backwards too? Like, does the poop fly out of the toilet back in your little butt butt? Oh, how how like uncomfortable you, would yeah, that be? Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. have to like you have to have cold? like a reverse bowel movement? You know what I mean? Cold? Like it's no, probably it wouldn't cold, be right? cold. <laughs> well no, because no, all the water all the water would reverse entropy off your shit as it flew back out of the water. Can we stop yeah. saying reverse entropy, please? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, fine. Reverse diarrhea. All right, so thank imagine you. <laughs> you have a big old honking beefer of a shit because that's just a new, I don't know, adjective. Yes. Um, and I don't know where that came from, but I love Honk and Beefer so much. I want to thank Derek it's really for good. Yeah. bringing. It to I, my I, I think it was Derek. I think it's it was, so like uh, applicable too. Like you can use it in almost any scenario. It's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we get a, a big old Honk and Beefer of a shit. <laughs> anyway, so back to the really important stuff. You lay out this massive turd, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, and it's like a fist just punching you, punching its way back up into your rectum. Right. I mean, yeah. that's. Well, no, it, it would it would delicately, gently just. Slide. Uh, it, would feel, true. it would feel weird. Yeah. It probably feel. It probably feel true. like someone was putting something in you, because you know. And instead of your, <laughs> <laughs> something would be getting put into you. Yeah, yeah. Something be getting put into you. What was it? Wasn't you think of it, what, when you break it down, though, is it isn't isn't shitting just reverse entropy penetration? Yes. <laughs> mm. R.E.P. Boys, this is called poo-ception. Uh, so my my real my real question, I guess, is didn't they tell the main character? Oh, and by the way, they did name somebody in that film because the bad guy's name was Sater, and I almost forgot that. We talked about last week how they didn't name anybody, and they actually did. I, th- no, I mean, my, they, they named everyone had a name except for the protagonist. I just didn't remember anybody's name because they were all forgettable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Everybody but the pro- okay. Yeah. So um, they told him uh, the the protagonist when he was shooting. They're like, well, you just have to feel it because you're catching the. You have to feel it because you're catching yeah. the bullet. So does that mean like if you you get it, you're like you like just feel the shit. Just just you have to just right. remember where you drop that hot dog <laughs> off, at <laughs> so you can line it up properly. But what, what, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? How, how, what do you think worse cool though? Like, would you feel to just hang your ass over a toilet waiting for shit to just <laughs> zoop back up into your butt? <laughs> it's just the most vulnerable position. It's already bad enough when it's coming out of you. But like, imagine someone cu- like walks by and they're like, "What are you doing?" And you have to explain that. It's a fucking yeah. nightmare. Ca- ca- catching my poop. Catching can you my imagine poop my little butt? I'm already peeing, baby. Like, get the fuck out. Shut the door. Eh? Can you imagine peeing, going through- peeing backwards? Would have to be worse though, right? Uh, I would. It's probably better, right? Uh, You're standing uh, further. Have you, have you have you ever had like 
a backfire comp, like a coom that backfired a little well. bit. How bad that hurts! Imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine peeing it makes back a cracking hurts. sound too. It's a. F- <laughs> I it, it almost makes like somebody the, stepped the, on the, celery. It's like what, what was that sound? <laughs> it, ma- <laughs> it makes the premise more comical to think about. Like, imagine going through the day like knowing you're gonna have to do reverse entropy through it again for some reason, and you have to take like this monster shit. You're like, ah, oh, it's gonna be diarrhea, and you have like hemorrhoids. So you're like hovering over the fucking toilet, and you're like, why, everything why, I do why right in this now. Scenario, why in this scenario do we all have to have hemorrhoids? That sounds really unpleasant. <laughs> Because yeah, it, but the it, shit it would then fix to make the you hemorrhoids hover. because you would de-strain yourself. So that <laughs> yeah. then you would be anticipating. What are we fucking talking about right now? <laughs> <laughs> the really okay. important things in life. <laughs> I had oh no, Scott. My God. Scott was on the precipice of something great. I feel like. Yeah, but I lost it. I lost it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Derek, <laughs> you forget, pulled it I, away. I forget. I forget it was. Our reverse entropy <sighs> pooped that thought out of your fucking brain. <laughs> <laughs> Went right up my ass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So let's oh, so let's oh, say oh. let's say let's say tenant rules apply, right? Right. Which means it, it, which which means nothing makes sense, but everything's right. backwards. So when you're taking a shit in in temp, what is it? What does he call it? It's not temporal time, right? What what, what, what do they call it in the movie? In, inverted. Rever- is it I, inverted? I don't know. It would Back. be a temp. It would be it would be like their temporal pincer movement, but it'd be a temporal bowel movement. Hear me okay. out. Hear me okay. out. Hear me out. You're shitting. The poop's going backwards out of the water, back in your butt. That's weird. It's squishy. It probably doesn't feel good at all. Right. Or maybe it feels real great, and you're like, taking it back, like, whoa. <laughs> Why haven't I shit backwards before? <laughs> uh, but but also, you could pull up a Robert Pattinson endless time loop, and you could go back in time, walk in as you're pooping backwards in your own butt, and hold your hand and comfort yourself. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I like but that you, idea. But, but you'd have to have gloved hands on, because as we, like, if you touch yourself, all existence is gone right right as yeah. the catholic it, 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 church it's, it's, teaches us yes yeah yeah it's it's the it's the dog the the <laughs> it's it's the the kevin smith dogma uh what, what am i looking for here <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't know i just wanted to let you go with that i have a so do can you we talk um, about how bad kevin smith sucks can we cold open yeah. with that what a Hang piece on. of shit kevin can, I, smith can is? I pose one question do you think pooping in reverse feels like you're someone's throwing like wet clay at your butthole <laughs> Or pouring it in there. Because you'd feel it harden, right? It gets in there and then it's just... <laughs> I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of variables to consider here. Yeah. I, I didn't know if the, the face that Scott made was I'm over this conversation or now I know. Very <laughs> contemplative. <laughs> like, huh. We should really test this out. Does somebody want to no. throw some uh, wet clay in my bottle? <laughs> If if that's a euphemism, I'm not into it. (laughs) (laughs) It is, and rats. (laughs) All right, so uh, what about Kevin Smith now? Oh, You posted something this week, Derek, about what a piece of shit Kevin Smith is, about how he's always crying, and he always posts those cringy pictures. Can you imagine how embarrassing it is to be Kevin Smith's daughter now? Like, he, he lost all this weight. He's not, like, the funny, jolly guy anymore. He's just the weird, skinny guy at the Comic Con. You know what I mean? Like, his head is shaped so weird. It's like an upside down teardrop. Like it's real skinny down by the chin, but it's still real he, fat up top. He, oh, he, he looks like somebody who your cousin would move into a halfway house with when he's all skinny. Now. I don't like it. <laughs> it's fucking weird. And he's always crying. Uh, he's always sharing his feelings. It's like he's working the 10 steps at an NA meeting. And <laughs> his, his daughter has to be humiliated. Like her best friend is Johnny Depp's daughter. Like granted, Johnny Depp looks like he's made. He's a skeleton loosely wrapped in clay at this point he in time. He looks bad. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's like it's like when you go into like you remember when you had like your intro to the sculpting classes in like grade school and they give yeah. you those they give you those wooden dolls, like those marionette looking dolls you could position in all these different things, but then you like would add clay to them. Yeah. Johnny Johnny Depp looks like one of the children didn't have enough clay. <laughs> <laughs> but tried his best. Yeah, like like he's sculpting the face, and they took a little too much out of the cheeks. <laughs> like let, let's just say he doesn't need as much prosthetic makeup or CGI in the next Pirates of the Caribbean movie if he's allowed in it. Let, let's just say that Johnny Johnny Depp looks like. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, please, please continue. Remember the remember the guy who needed a bone marrow transplant on South Park. <laughs> Anybody? I missed that one. Sorry. Okay. okay never mind then. <laughs> let's cut, let's cut All right, that well, right out. Fuck you guys then. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin
Kevin Smith, I can't stand him, but it's not like he's done anything like actually horrible, right? He just is an insufferable personality. So like the pain that I wish on him is very, very small. Like just to keep things even. Like yeah. just like splinters and stepping on Legos and shit. I don't hope his family dies or anything, but he just sucks. Jesus. He's such George a Lucas. soft personality. I, I just I just can't stand him. I want his idols to make him feel like shit. I want George Lucas <laughs> to call him a pussy. <laughs> Just to bring him down a couple things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you want to fucking you want to cry over a puppet? I'll give you something to cry about, you little pussy. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great if George Lucas was like, "Do you really do this crying thing I've been hearing about?" Yeah, you understand what a pussy you look like? Can you knock that yeah. shit off? Yeah. Oh my god, I feel personally attacked by both of you. <laughs> no, <laughs> why? 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 You're not. You're not. You're not. Crying. Look, you did, you, feel, did, you shared one crying selfie with us. I, I feel you got very like similar. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. so g- let's give me ten years of, of social facing uh, commentary on right. the, the you know the nerd culture around us, and and I'll catch up to him. Yeah, but we're at the point now where Kevin Smith, I feel like he, he's crying over the She-Hulk announcement. Like he, anything sets him <laughs> off. Like you know what I mean? Like you don't. Have, it doesn't have to be big news or something that's like 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 seeing Luke on screen, even though the face should have been anything but what it was. It was still emotional seeing Ahsoka yeah. for the first time, watching Mando say goodbye to to Baby Yoda, Grogu, the kid. Yeah, like like that that got that got everybody choked up. Kevin Smith, I I feel like anyone who lived in Kevin Smith's house with him just went for a drive when that when that episode started playing. He probably did not shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah. for thirty three minutes straight or thirty eight minutes straight. He probably just bawled his fucking eyes out. Uh, it's he sounds. I bet, like, I bet when he cries, he sounds like Pac Man dying. Too. Let it's us know what you're obnoxious. done. Obnoxious. Yeah, uh, in, in my estimation, Kevin Smith is like the um, the the older cousin who used to be like really cool to you when you were little yeah. and you yeah. would hang, and you would hang out with him. And then you get older and you're like, oh, he's kind of a fucking loser. But yeah. I still have a warm place in my heart for Kevin. And I have a cousin exactly like that. And I doubt he would ever listen to the podcast, but literally exa- <laughs> like, gonna be exactly like exactly like that. <laughs> You're gonna get, you're gonna get a really sad text message like two days from now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, like being like I overly mean, nice, like, well, I still think you're cool, man. Have a good night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would that would be the worst if he just took it like with sadness right on the chin. Like, okay, well, that didn't work out the way I planned. Kev- Kevin Smith is an asshole for a lot of reasons. One of which is he wears a hockey jersey everywhere. Like, he, he, yeah. I feel like he would show up to a fucking wedding in a hockey jersey and think it's okay because he's Kevin Smith. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, like that's, that's, that summarizes how I feel about Kevin Smith. Yeah. Like you're not 24 anymore. Wear a regular fucking shirt. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, really? That game is just Especially not now you lost anymore. all that weight. You're going to buy all them jerseys again in the small. Like, really? <laughs> are you going to do it? Why don't you just go to like, like, I, I know I understand like you're excited. You don't have to shop at men's warehouse yeah. anymore. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, holy shit. My weight fluctuates too, Kevin Smith. I get it. I'm not Jonah Hill fat. I've never been Jonah Hill fat, but I've, I've had the fluctuations. You know, like, like over the course of two weeks, like 15, 15 pounds. I get the, it. The vitriol coming out of YouTube towards Kevin Smith. I mean, the, I might as well make this our, our hate, hate holiday special. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking at the cynical nerd podcast. Um, Let's get this thing rolling. I want to get the fucking get episode started. Yeah. I, w- welcome to the Cynical Nerd. This is our, our holiday episode, episode 14, boys. 14. It also marks the uh, roughly three-month anniversary of the podcast. We started uh, September 27th was the first episode, so this will be going up two days roughly past that. Yeah. Welcome, as always, uh, my boys Scott and Derek. Scott, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I just want to take a minute to clarify... Uh, last week, I, I told a joke, the basis of which was that if you own a building and you don't give it a 13th floor, you are a giant sopping wet pussy. I agree with that. Uh, but it, it does sound like I'm calling iron workers pussies, and I'm pretty sure every iron worker I've ever met could kick my ass. I just want to clarify that. They're tough guys. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I, I don't like heights, yeah. and, and you all have much bigger dicks than me. Like, I, no, no argument. Uh, <laughs> Derek, how about you? Not too bad. Uh, I also would like to clarify that, you know, we got we got fuck TCN for the first time on a couple things for last week's episode. Uh, and I'm going to fight like TCN legitimate, myself. legitimate, legitimate. Oh, I didn't even ch- I, we've gotten so little. I didn't even check tw- the Twitter handles today. I'm, I'm fucking bad host, man. Uh, I'm going to call myself out. This was not fuck TCN on, but I looked it up after the episode and the okay. uh, uh, who's on third joke that Scott said that I said was a 100 year old Marx Brothers joke. That didn't make sense because they were silent film era. That wasn't Marx Brothers at all. It was Abbott and Costello and it was more like 80 years ago. So I'm just for anyone who caught that 
if you lost any amount of respect for me, I hope that this lets you regain that respect and we can start our relationship anew. And yeah, I wouldn't want to offend apologize. any of those hardcore Abbott and Costello fans. Yeah, to our exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're just waiting for the Abbott and Costello jokes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we, we pepper them, man. Yeah, touche. I mean, we did have a couple. You're right. T- a couple fuck TCNs. Not bad. Not yes. bad. They're also peppered. I don't know why Twitter search is so god awful that it peppers in current searches along with. Well, I guess I could sort them by latest. That would make sense. So never mind Twitter. That's called dad brain. Not your fault. <laughs> Uh, one of them was about Ryan Dunn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ryan Dunn wasn't driving drunk when he died. He was um, being driven by a being drunk driven person. by a while, drunk while also drunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was drunk. He just wasn't driving. Sorry, yeah. Rye guy. We love you, bud. Yeah. I mean, well, well, let's also clarify that we didn't rip on him at all in that yeah, episode. And, uh, we no. ripped on Stevo, and we all agree that we that if we could exchange. <clears throat> Stevo for Ryan, we would do it. <laughs> oh no! I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna say it, but fuck it. Like, let me, search, gonna... listeners, search your search your feelings. You know, you know it to, it be, to true. be true. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what Ryan Dunn wouldn't have been doing? He wouldn't have been climbing a fucking billboard at SeaWorld. He wouldn't be banging Kat Von D. I'm not saying he would have changed the world, but he wouldn't be a constant reminder of what a stupid, dumb hunk of shit he is. He probably yeah. would have faded into obscurity like yeah. he should have. 100%. And lived a very long, happy life or a very short but slightly longer life. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the say? Uh, we're coming with the fucking hatred today, boys. I no, love no, it. no, no. I love Ryan Dunn. <laughs> you I'm just wanted to, to love him for slightly longer. Yeah, right. at least. Just wanted a few more years of that Ryan Dunn love. <laughs> yeah, let's like, be well, real. Like, well, getting... I, I would have given, given Steve O and Wee Man for Ryan Dunn back. Steve O uh, combo deal, yeah. Because I feel like I feel like, it, like it's got to be like you know like like the the law of, of equivalency, right? Like if like Full Metal Alchemist, there's no way Steve O's immortal soul weighs as much as Ryan does. Like there's just no way. You know what I mean? Like he, he's he has he has pissed away so much of his dignity and self love and respect for himself. He can't he can't be he can't be a real boy. He he's he's like wooden wooden Pinocchio Geppetto status. <laughs> Did we, did we talk about like Geppetto banging the puppet before? Did we have no, that conversation? I think we did, and I, I don't. That like, doesn't one, sound I, familiar, but I believe you. I believe that we talked about that. Yeah, I don't remember where it ended up, and to be honest with you, I don't think I want to remember where, where the conversation ended up. Um, we don't have. It's a quiet week, boys. I mean, we just finished up Christmas. We're coming up on New Year's. We don't have a, a ton of news, so we're probably going to be. I don't know, just trashing people and things. A majority of the podcast today, but. But uh, we <laughs> they can't defend themselves. Yes, yeah, specifically the, the dead. Go, go fuck yourself. Uh, you know, you, especially because you can't defend yourselves. Easy targets is what I'm saying. They can still um, vote though, right? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is gonna be like the bag oh, of worms oops, episode. Oops, did, I, did, I, did I? Did I say something wrong, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> not not taking it out. I'm not even. Uh, I'm not even drinking, bro. It's just I'm so tired that it's just. It's just yeah, we gotta out. we yeah. we gotta get through this before you need to go to, to bedtime. And I I hope you're feeling better. But I feel all right. All right. Then first up in the weekend review news this week, we have the coming to America trailer. If I had just waited two more fucking days, we would have had the pictures and the trailer to talk about. But instead. We have to talk about it two weeks in a row. Uh, the trailer released last week, uh, and I have to say, just from a preliminary thoughts perspective, that it was a it was a joy. I I thought the trailer was a joy, and I I wasn't I didn't even know that my intention was to say that it came out naturally. Uh, the trailer to for me really kind of captured the feeling of the original. Um, in a way that I don't necessarily think it's hard to do because the the, the equation to capture that is um, fancy outfits, uh, Eddie Murphy talking in an accent, and then Eddie Murphy in a lot of different prosthetics to make up what we'll call his now famous nutty professor scenes. But uh, I thought the the <laughs> jokes the jokes hit for me. Uh, I thought it was funny. The premise is fine. It's like whatever. They didn't have to stretch it crazy. They're just like, oh, you have a son in America, by the way. You got to go find him. He's your ear. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Fuck it. Let's go. I'm on board. Uh, Derek, how'd you, how'd you feel about it? Uh, I thought it looks pretty good. I think that, you know, when you say um, that it captured sort of the spirit of the original, I agree with that. The only thing is whenever I see that in trailers, it, it kind of worries me that they're going to do like that thing that so many sequels that wait too long do where they just like rehash every fucking joke from the original movie. 
and yeah, think that valid. that makes like a brand new movie, which it totally doesn't. It doesn't work. It's a horrible formula. But anyway, uh, I, I, it, it was funny. I, I haven't seen the original since I was a kid, but I fucking loved that movie. So I have to watch that again yeah. soon uh, before it comes out. But um, yeah, no, it looks good to me. How about you, Scott? Uh, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did, honestly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was really Same. skeptical yeah. about it because, because like you were saying, like, like the 20 year sequel syndrome, you know, like we got Anchorman 2, uh, not quite 20, not, not quite 20 years, but Anchorman 2 was a huge letdown. Super Troopers 2, Independence Day Resurgence, the king of the 20 year, why the fuck is this happening sequel? Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, and, and like with this, there's also, there's also a constant fear because Eddie Murphy has kind of, not, not to say that he's one note, he is a very brilliant comedian mm-hmm. and he's a great actor, but even like you see like with character films like this, like Mike Myers kind of fell into a, a rhythm where it was the same movie again and again and again. Even when he shifted to a different franchise, it felt like the same fucking thing. Uh, and, and Nutty Professor and, and Norbit felt like the same fucking thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. Uh, mm-hmm. Coming to America is, is worlds apart, though. The casting is what made the first one so strong, like like breakouts for people like Samuel L. Jackson, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I was excited to see some of the surprise cast. I didn't know Wesley Snipes was in this until I saw the trailer. I was like. Oh shit! Yeah, he plays he's like a crazy a warlord time. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, "Fuck it!" I was like, "You got Wesley Snipes, uh, Arsenio Hall playing multiple characters has me really excited too." Because I don't know, man. I, 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 when I think of Arsenio Hall, I always just think of the fucking talk show at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm excited to see him him get a chance to really like maybe shine comedically like he did in the original with Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought I, I, like. I, t- Speaking of Wesley Snipes, I just wanted to say that like before, right before I had um, watched this trailer, I had watched um, What We Do in the Shadows, the show, which, by the way, you guys were 100 percent correct about that show. Oh, oh, it's fucking oh, incredible. Yes. Dude, I, so thought it were, I thought there this. were three seasons out. So like I got to the end of season two and I was like, hey, hey I got one more wrong. Only two. Yeah. Yeah. Super dude, it's, disappointing. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, three's in pro- three's in currently in production. I think. Right. Yeah. Right. But but, but the good Wesley news is- Snipes, uh, Wesley Snipes cameo as like being on the vampire council was so fucking good where like he's yeah, on a dude. zoom call and it's super delayed but anyway <laughs> seeing him in that and then like a day later seeing him in this trailer it's like ah oh, wesley snipes it's good to see you but it's been a while yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you got over all your tax evasion problems yeah. <laughs> that's basically what it comes down to uh, that's big news for me that you finally watched what we do in the shadows i've been waiting for this to happen mm. and that's i have so one question good. Did Scott ruining the Mark Hamill surprise ruin the episode for it you? It totally didn't at all. And I owe you an apology. It was, it was, it didn't ruin it at all. And the cameos, like, it's amazing that they can have like these huge names as cameos and they're yeah. totally secondary to the fucking main, right? Uh, or, right? Uh, yeah, the main yeah. cast. Fucking Laszlo, every fucking line he says hits for me. <laughs> every <laughs> single thing he says is hilarious to me. Do, I do you see never the don't laugh to- at him. Do you see the comparison? It's always sunny now, though, and that like it's so exaggerated. Like it's nowhere, yeah. it's nowhere near the same like formula. But it's just well, I mean, I, I see yeah. what you're saying because they're like yeah. fucking crazy people. Like they're yeah, totally yeah, like right. separated like, from society. And, yeah, well, you yeah. get this feeling. That even even other vampires aren't this fucking weird. Like, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. like, like these are the fu- these are the fucking like the rejects essentially. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I loved and, it. I loved it so much. It's so fucking good. Uh, one of my favorite episodes of the entire series, I think, is when they take the Baron out on like a night in the club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it's just like the and, best and fucking and time. He, he eats the cheesesteak and he's vomiting, flying around <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Dude. I was crying, dude. It's so uh, cool. yeah. That's the get, one that get, finally hooked me. That's like a couple episodes into season one. Yeah, yeah. And like I thought the ones leading up to it were funny, but I just kind of like you know whatever. I'd be on my phone during it. That was the episode that I was like, no, nah, this show is something else. Like this is a good yeah. show. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was dude, got it. I was I was just crying laughing. I'm so happy you finally caught up. Yeah, yeah I, I don't remember the announced release date, but uh, season three is in production. So yeah. hopefully they come with the same. They're, you can definitely tell they got more of a budget season two. Yeah. Right off the gate, they did some 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 higher you know production quality stuff. Um, let's hope they continue to bring it the fucking funny. Can uh, I ask I, you I, one question, Derek? Yes, please. Favorite cameo. Uh, you know what? I actually liked the 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 same one I had mentioned, the Vampire Council one, just because it was like nine cameos okay. in one, including the original yeah. cast from from the movie. I thought that was fucking hilarious. What about yeah. what about you, Chris? Same. Yeah, it's it's got to be that, and and also because off the top of my head, the only two I can really remember that were memorable to me in the moment. I mean, like Nick Kroll 
is funny only because he's a hideous human being and his character <laughs> his character was funny like the whole cursed hat bit was just fucking yeah. great and yeah. laszlo keeps bringing it back even though it's terrible for him and everybody around him yeah um but now yeah, I, I, I probably yeah probably the council if i had to pick one like mark hamill was really funny and his character yeah. was really well yeah. done and it was a blast to see him and the whole jackie daytona thing was hilarious mm-hmm. uh <laughs> but the council's like the overall. It's got to be like that's like the end game of of cameos in that fucking series. It's like uh, the big yeah, one. yeah. I, I gotta go Haley Joel Osment though. I gotta. Oh, I forgot oh, he was yeah. in it. See? So <laughs> fucking Fuck. funny. That's true. When he's like, because <laughs> but like because he dies, five, and then they bring him back, five. and then he's just a zombie for the entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> when he's a zombie, it's it's fucking great. Yeah, dude. Uh, we we all digress collectively. Um, next up after the coming to America trailer is. A, a kind of a not really an announcement, more of like a just passing detail about the She-Hulk series with Tatiana Maslany, uh, <laughs> that She-Hulk is going to be a half hour legal comedy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was going to make a joke about Murphy Brown or Ally McBeal in the MCU, and then the article actually physically said it like yeah. a paragraph later. I was like, fuck! <laughs> they, they read my mind, stole my joke before I could even say it. Uh, it why? 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 I, you know... Um, why? Derek's winning. Why? And I'll Derek's explain why? what I mean. Derek's winning. He's he's wearing me down and my eternally optimistic <laughs> brain. Every time I read something like this, uh, like a piece chips away. It's like someone's um, like I'm an unrefined block of marble and someone's just coming up with a chisel and they're like, oh, guess what? She-Hulk's going to be a half hour legal comedy. Chink. And I'm like, I felt that. And are, you not, wet clay? Any... are you wet clay about to fly into someone's yeah. asshole? <laughs> Yeah, just imagine the slapping noise. Um, it's like it's like slapping a, a thing of uh, gack on the wall. Uh, and you know, it's, take it's just, shits, my friend. It's little things like this. It's it's the 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 overwhelming amount of content we had announced previously. Even though I'm excited for a chunk of it, like that's still a chip away. It's stuff like this where I'm like a half hour legal drama. Like I, whenever I read this in my brain, I go. All right, they're throwing shit against the wall, like Derek says, to see what's like. That's what I mean by you're winning. Like every time this happens, something creeps in my brain and goes, "It's probably gonna suck, bro." Well, something and, weird is happening then because I'm kind of into this. If it uh, ends up being, listen, if it ends up being Marvel Harvey Birdman at law, I will be so fucking happy. I will be so satisfied. Like the fact that it had mentioned in there that it's meant to be um, like semi satirical, I think was the the word choice that they had. used. Yeah, they did. If yeah. it's a way to like look at Marvel itself or the superhero genre itself and kind of poke fun at it, that seems interesting to me. Um, but if it like if every episode sort of culminates with her like ripping her suit off and saving the day, then it's kind of like not so committed to the idea of doing something different. So who fucking right. knows? I mean, but like reading that, I was kind of like, oh, that's a little interesting. Nothing that I'm like, oh, I can't wait for this show now. But it was just like, I, I didn't know that they were taking sort of like a satirical avenue. So I don't I know. You. I'm a little Wait. more interested than I was, which was absolutely not at all initially. So, I mean, there were there were two runs of, of the She-Hulk comic books where it was like more about superhero law like you know spider-man suing uh jonah j jameson for libel you know what mm-hmm. i mean yeah for, for slander um like, things like that like i mean I, I i didn't think of it as a harvey birdman type thing that could work but also like it's got to be a thing like it, it would have to be a thing where like she's she hawk but we only see her as she hawk like one time a season and it's always for something like stupid like it can't right. it can't devolve into a, into an act like a second tier action show you know what i mean like, yeah right that, I don't know. I just um, in my brain and, and sure, I, I didn't mean like you've wrung the optimism out of me. I still hope this is good. I do. I, and I obviously this character has life in the comics, most of it being in the fourth wall kind of poking. Like Scott said, there's there's been just fun superhero cases. She special specializes in superhero cases. Uh, again, another example from the article is a dead man's ghost who takes a stand at his own murder trial because of Doctor Strange. Um, you know, people who. A guy falls into a vat of chemicals and gains powers. He sues the company for negligence. I mean, right. they're interesting concepts, and on the pages of a comic book, work very well. I just, in my brain, I'm having a hard time reconciling this half-hour comedy kind of legal show with super uh, heroics and how 
they could even marry those two concepts together. And, and I hope they do. And I hope it's I hope it's really great. The half hour thing feels like a vote of we're not super confident in this yet yes. to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you there. But uh, I mean, you know, in the same vein, though, like most of the Mandalorian episodes don't clock in at more than 30 minutes. Yeah, like or much, much more. You know, what I mean? like they're usually like 35 minutes or so. Yeah, that's kind of the outlier there, right? I mean, most Marvel shows have been an hour besides like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is on ABC. I mean, everything else has been an hour per episode. And that seems to be the, the given thing for most streaming shows. And, and again, I, I that's the that's the cynic in me that's saying, like, maybe they don't think it. it's like an experiment to them. And I guess technically every new show is an experiment for Marvel to see how it works. So. We'll see. We we don't even know the the episode lengths for like WandaVision and yeah. that comes out in like 16, 17 days at this point. So if yeah. it ends up you being know. like this tongue in cheek thing that like I mean, like, you know, it uh, succinct episodes could be good because um, drawing that out might get kind of tiresome. But I agree if there's some like overarching story that's like and we're meant to like take it seriously, then half an hour or an hour, it's just going to get real fucking old anyway. That's true. Um, but if they if they you know, if they did something different, it could be kind of kind of interesting if they sort of poke fun at themselves. I think that could be a good move. That's true. Uh, we do know that Mark Ruffalo and Tim Roth are coming back as uh, their respective roles of Hulk and Abomination. So they will have some, I guess, what you would call, you know, heavier hitters in that area. I don't know. Tim Roth's Abomination. I just meant like more uh, well-known got, yeah. actors. Yeah, I didn't mean they were. I feel like good. I feel like the only way that that should happen is they should have them be in a big ridiculous CGI fight scene in the first episode, and then someone who's injured, like in in the dumbest way possible, like gets like you know sprained neck or something because they're you know they hit him with a car or something, and that's is, the su- whole. Is, is suing Abomination and Hulk's a witness. Yeah, it has to be something like ridiculous like that where it's not even about them. They're just, you know what I mean? I, th- I think you just wrote the whole season. That's probably exactly yeah. what they're going to do. <laughs> so I mean, they, I, they, big I action set piece. Minor inconvenience, minor injury as a result. First lawsuit. That's that's episode one. But you can imagine that it might be kind of funny if they call like Tim Roth's character in and they're like, oh, no, actually, Abomination is on trial. And they like make him transform (laughs) and sit in the little seat to like try him like shit like that could be really fucking funny. Yeah, they're like, here, go go in the waiting room and get really pissed off. Read all these news articles. (laughs) Like we we have to get him on the stand. Uh That that should be their tagline. The Scott Scott was writing it as he was talking. Big set piece, minor inconvenience. <laughs> she Hulk. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, next piece of news. It's also Marvel related, Marvel adjacent, uh, and it's it's more of like a this is kind of cool to know slash how are they going to work this out in the end? Uh, Chadwick Boseman, the late Black Panther. Um, is he finished recording multiple episodes of the Marvel's What If animated series that we reviewed the trailer for a couple episodes back? Uh, Kevin Feige was talking to Emmy magazine and said he came in three or four times, recorded numerous episodes before he passed away in August. That means that we know one of the What If premises is is What If uh, the Ravagers and Michael Rooker's character uh, Yondu picked up uh, T'Challa himself as opposed yeah. to uh, you know our Star Lord, and it's. I, I, I don't we really know how that ends for Star Wars. Give it, yeah, exa- I, I mean, I don't really give a shit about that than, yeah. premise, but uh, I mean, it's nice to know we're going to at least get to hear Chadwick Boseman again. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I It's a nice sentiment. I, I don't really have much else to say about it besides thinking that, oh, that's cool that that, that kind of like, you know, posthumous thing that we're going to get from that actor. It'll be nice to hear him one last time, you know, and and hopefully they found a way to, you know, kind of honor him in the storyline. Yeah. I, I imagine they're probably looking at those episodes again with a with a magnifying glass to see if anything can be done. I mean, obviously, you don't want to compromise the work they've done, but at the same time, it's a delicate situation. So, I mean, it, um, it's, hard, it's hard to believe that the higher ups at Marvel weren't aware of how severe the situation was. You know what I mean? I think I, I think I think this this might have been done intentionally because of his condition and how bad things right. have gotten. You know, there's, I mean, there's, there's an interview with him where he's talking to somebody uh, post release of Black Panther about about the, you know the success, the critical success, like how it's you know doing so well, and they're asking him his question. He he keeps saying like it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm already dead or something. Yeah, have you, have yeah. you seen that video? No, yeah, I've I seen him. I've seen like interviews of him where he gets really choked up uh, mm-hmm. when he talks about like his like what the movie meant to him and what the movie means to like little kids and stuff like that. I hadn't seen the one about him saying like. I'm already dead or whatever, but I do have to agree with you. And it's almost something that like, I didn't really want to bring up because it seems, I don't know, weird, but like the thing is 
stage, you don't have stage four cancer and like nobody around you knows it. Um, you're, yeah. you're really not in a good way when you have stage four cancer of any kind. Um, so I thought that too, that basically like it was a shock to all of us. And of course it was none of our fucking business, so it's okay. But people around him had to know. And I hadn't thought of that, that like maybe they did get his lines done knowing at a minimum that he was not doing well and to kind of get that, you know, get that in. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean. At face value, the information we got was that they did not know, but you're right to assume that we you'd have to be kind of stupid, it, especially if they had seen him. Yeah. At any point, if someone saw him in a meeting, you're like, yo, he doesn't look like he's doing that well. You know, mm -hmm. something might be going on because the, you know, by all accounts, the reporting we read around it during his death was that it, they did not know. He did not tell anybody specifically. Yeah. Um, again, none of our business. And that's a, that's his decision to make. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you're kind of right. If you want to be a realist about it, they probably had some inkling. Someone probably told them something. Um, who knows if that played a factor in the dialogue recording. But either way, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be nice yeah. to get him uh, on camera one more time. By all accounts, everything that's come out since his passing, he just seemed like a fucking stand up dude. So, yeah, um, this is shitty to lose somebody like that. Um, all right. So next we have to talk about the sequel to the Emmy nominated film, mm. Mm. Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, that's <laughs> the uh, uh, they show that at the Cannes Film Festival, right? The uh, uh, Academy yeah, Award winning film. Sonic. Uh, I believe Ben Schwartz won Best Actor. Uh, and competing Jim against Car nobody. Jim, Car Jim Carrey won Best Supporting Actor. Yeah. Yeah. Due to lack best of competition. Play, best <laughs> best, yeah. best yeah. editing. Best Man, it really, really killed this year. I, I feel yeah. like that. <laughs> I feel like we talked about that so long ago that I don't even remember if it was in an episode or if that was in one of the fall episodes that <laughs> haven't seen the light of day. Because it was yeah, such a fucking either. long time ago. It was a running joke for like four episodes. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Emmy nominated film, Sonic the Hedgehog. But there are new reports for the sequel that we knew was coming because the movie actually performed fairly well. And it was not a shit show, surprisingly, which you ex you just kind of expect out the gate with a with a video game adaptation these days. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog two begins production in May of this year and will include central video game character Knuckles. Now, let me ask you boys a question. Mm -hmm. I hold Knuckles near and dear to my heart. That's the Sonic and and, and Tails and and with Knuckles involved were the Sonic games I recall on the Sega Genesis growing up. How do you pronounce his species? Is it Echidna? I always thought Echidna. Okay. Yeah, I've That's never tried. I've never tried to pronounce it out loud out of fear of getting it wrong. Now so that I you just... ask me, though, like I know <laughs> it's wrong. Like immediately, I, I'm not questioning if it's wrong. It has to be. Now that you've like asked the question out loud, <laughs> I'm gonna look okay. it up. How's that? Yeah, yeah. It's a little, little fact finding mission. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this is kind of like this is like no shit news, right? Like if if you grew up with Sonic the Hedgehog at all, if you know anything about his character, you know that a big chunk of his universe is his family of friends is tails and knuckles and the people around him and it, right yeah. it's a kid later Seems later like uh, kid amy now. amy amy it was added into the lore right shadow was it, was it just amy i remember shadow there's there's big the cat there's amy who is like the little, little pink hedgehog looking thing uh i don't know what she is you guys lost me here. I know, like Sonic, yeah. Tails, Knuckles. That's that's it. Really? You guys I, never played I've Sonic Adventure on, on the on the Sega Dreamcast? I believe he has a katana. It's very looks very cool. Um, katana, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, no, Shadow sucked. Shadow was like Shadow was like the Mountain Dew drinking version of Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <laughs> Sonic is already the Mountain Dew drinking version of Sonic. So that's really got to well, be just edge yeah, meister status. Yeah, like <laughs> like like. We, like all right, well, they're, they're both they're both the Mountain Dew drinkers. But like Shadow's the guy who like saved up all his Mountain Dew points all summer long and got like a a sick wave board, you know what I mean? Like a a sick a sick biggie board with like a Baja Blast symbol on it. <laughs> a fucking yeah. A he downloaded board, the mobile bro. game and grinded points. He he really went all out. Right. Did, did he get like a boogie board with a shark on it? Like one of those. Yeah. Sweet it's, it's, well, it's got the shark spin on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, sick, bro. He's yeah. riding high. So off it's that it's, bad it's boy. almost like a wakeboard, but it's still made of shitty cheap styrofoam. Yeah. He tries right. to get you to watch anime all the time, and it's like Shadow. I'm not into it. It's not my thing. But he yeah. just keeps pushing. It'll, it and pushing the it. boogie board will still snap in half if you land on it wrong. You know, like yeah. you, you, 
one big wave. But, but by, by anime, you just mean like the same four episodes of Dragon Ball Z he has DVR'd? Right, right. An attack on <laughs> yeah. Titan. Yeah, he won't shut yeah, the fuck up about it. Well, it's it's four episodes because it's all just one fight between Goku yeah. and yeah. one other person. Atta- attack stand. on Titan is a can of worms we can't even get into because that's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I know lots of people who like it. I've never seen it. I can't talk about it. it I mean, it would be cool if all the if all the giants weren't just like giant naked morons. Yeah, they're like, just they're just real life heroin addicts. That's what they are. Just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they can't talk. They just yeah, it's, it, walk you know, around you know that shrink ray from Honey from Honey I Blew Up the Kids, where like Rick yeah. Moranis makes all the children giant. It's like yeah. somebody just went down down Aramingo Ave in Kensington, just lasering the sidewalk with that shit. It's just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That feels like a very specific reference, and we all got the context. Yeah. Derek, Derek, Derek gets it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. The sequel's coming up. Woo, and we got a little off a topic of there, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Some of my favorite bits are when Scott goes on a tangent, though. I mean, Dude, it's, is- it's so stupid. It's so st- everyone's like they got all these cool. They got these cool fucking gun blades, and they swing around. It's like, yeah, but they're fighting giant infants. They're fo- they're fighting full grown invalids. Like the, they don't these. They, there's nothing. Boys, it feels like. We have to do an Attack on Titan watch along now. Are you spring. really going to make me fucking watch more it's anime so that I stupid. don't like? It's so stupid. And the thing I'll is, like, par- parts of it are cool. Parts of it are really cool. Like, the whole thing is cool until you see what they're so afraid of. You're like, that thing? Yeah. Like, if, <laughs> like, like that, that thing would look you in the eyes, pick its nose, and eat it if it couldn't eat you. Like, it's, yeah. how, are you how is that the thing that everyone's terrified yeah, let me, of? Let me ask you a question. Is it basically like Pacific Rim if the kaiju were, like, Simple Jack? Yes. Holy yes. shit. That's yes. that's really fucking oh good. <laughs> Yo, please, 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 Photoshop's Photoshop. <laughs> I don't think you can do that. Simple Jack as the fucking yeah. guy coming up, picking his head over the wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so just, just I'm gonna out do on it. Front Street. Just we all Front know my Street. great uh, Photoshop skills, so don't worry. Yeah. I'm on it, gang. I, I can. I think I can handle it. There's, <laughs> there's probably, a, yeah, we could probably get that done. Um, I will just say I am completely down to watch it because I will probably hate it, which means it'll probably be funny. It'll so be easy I'm to always, make fun of. That's what I'm. <laughs> I'm always down to, to take cheap shots at properties that I can't, you know, I should respect and don't. So the thing is, it's, it's one of those shows that like has all these moments that should have this huge emotional weight to them, like all these dramatic, horrific things. Where if 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 it was anything, if any, if the Titans looked and acted any different way, any different way at all, it would be. I would love it. I feel like it would be a, it would be a, a really well written show because it does have those huge like emotional moments where like somebody like somebody watches their mother get like eaten alive and torn apart. Yeah. By, but it's it's like watching a giant toddler play with play doh when you like see their dumb face like and their milk their milky eyes and like the, the spittle. There's always spittle. Yeah. I, I, I listen. Show. I watched the first season years ago. Yeah. Same. Same. And I, I'm going to tell you this. It's like, are the giants really stupid? They are. But that's kind of what's scary about them. Like, I liken them to heroin addicts in Kensington, and that's exactly what they are. But if those heroin addicts in Kensington that you just walk right past were fucking 90 feet tall, you'd be horrified of them. That's the whole point. Now, the show gets stupid because they had to turn it into a fucking anime. The main character can, like, turn into a giant (laughs) that fights other giants. It's like, all right, I'm done. I'm out. Like, this was... This was okay for a little while. Now it's really bad. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, but, it's but, then, but then like other then like other people can start doing it too. Like, oh, like, I didn't know beat. that. That's terrible. <laughs> He's not the only person who can like become a titan or become a, become a yeah the, yeah right titan. No, the, yeah, 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 yeah. It's real, dude. It's so basically what I'm getting from you guys is that you're excited that Knuckles is going to be in the Sonic scene. Oh, can't wait. Can <laughs> cannot wait. Yeah, I mean, obviously, of course, we we all we all played. Sonic three, and Knuckles was like the breakout star of that game. Yeah, uh, and then then Sonic and Knuckles came out. That cartridge you could plug your other cartridges into, and then suddenly Sonic one, Sonic two, and Sonic three had Knuckles as a playable character and Tails in all three games. We talking about that was a sick development was idea, by the way. Yeah, yeah, super sick. Yeah, I don't when, appreciate that shit as an adult. We're, we're talking about like how how little ingenuity there is in, mo- in modern day console generations last week. Right, like you, you can't oh, even Nick's swap. Nick's playing at- Destiny Two, guys. Just in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like you, you can't, you can't even, you can't even swap out like like a graphics card or or you know what I mean, or a CPU in in a console to upgrade. But like they they had entire they had ga- they had games that changed based on the game you plugged the game into. Yeah, like what the fuck? Sco- Super yeah. Super Six, bro. 
Super Game Boy. I feel like they should make that, you know, like reuse that. You should be able to put a CD on top of a CD into your mm -hmm. PS5 mm -hmm. and play mm -hmm. as Knuckles in whatever fucking video game you want. Bro, no, the deepest cut of all time would be if they somehow engineered a cut of the first film that you could get with the second one to put Knuckles in the original. <laughs> if they can fucking make this work. <laughs> amazing. But he's like, he's always just like but watching he's really, in the like, distance. Naturally in it, like he's actually responding and people are responding to him. It's like they just found actual places to put him in that made sense. Yeah, like like someone it's gets brilliant. done punching like a metal door and they're like, oh, my knuckles hurt. And they look over at <laughs> knuckles and he's, he's like just staring at everybody, you know, someone someone says, like, well, this is not the way. <laughs> oh, God, my queen. This is not the way. <laughs> All right, boys, that, there's nothing hate? there. We're we're just stretching a piece of news out because we oh, yeah, well, the riff on it, shit. It, it does have implications though that, that Jim Carrey will be back, but will he though? I, I don't mean, know. I, he he apparently really liked that role, and like all of his friends really loved him in that role, so it wouldn't surprise I, me. I I loved him in that role, but I feel he like we great. didn't see him as like crazy Robotnik until the very very end. Yeah, yeah. So, so like so it he, seems like it'd be foolish for him not to come back and be full balls to the wall, crazy ass, fat. Bald, yeah. crazy mustache. Like I need it. I need it yeah. more than yeah. I needed anything else in, in the docket this week. We, we, we all know that like, Jim Carrey loves just getting under full prosthetics and going ridiculously crazy. So I mean, I'm I'm very very much on board with that. I watched the original. Uh, I don't remember our conversations if you guys had seen it too or not, but yeah, it's it's fine. It's not great. It's not a good movie by any stretch, but it's. It's, it would be. It does it. It it, it gets and it's, much better than it had any right to be. I'll yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Like when I heard Sonic the Hedgehog movie, I was like, oh god. Also, one more idea. I feel like I'm. I'm. These guys should be writing down notes. A studio for the sequel. As a marketing ploy, because they're starting production in May, April first. You release a picture of Knuckles, but in the shitty pre redo version, <laughs> like they did for Sonic, <laughs> just to fuck with everybody. <laughs> And then they say psych gotcha the next day with the actual version that no one's going to have nightmares of. I want the fucking original Sonic cut. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to fucking see it. God damn it. We deserve just, it. You, you already no. started the animation. Let us just see it. I don't want a toothy Sonic. I hope they burned <laughs> all the files associated with that horrible monstrosity. It was pretty. It was like a sleep paralysis demon. It was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, moving along to the next piece of news. We have... Um, Again, just informational stuff. Ready Player Two is in development. We've never had the, I don't know. Uh, uh, we've never been cursed with having to discuss the first one, I oh, guess is how I'll put it. Thank God. Did you okay. guys? <laughs> uh, no, let me hear it. No, here it is. You're saying thank God, but like. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Does Zach that... said thank God. Thank God, as in like, thank God we've never had to do that, but we're about to do that. Oh, I, th I <laughs> thought you were going to say thank God you didn't like it that much. Is that what you, I, I meant? Like, saying? thank God you didn't like Ready Player One. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's what I. That's what Is I was that across up. the board? Okay. Are we? Are we? Yeah, yeah. All right, because yeah. that would be a whole argument. So I'm glad we, we don't have to do that. <laughs> so. That that would have just taken years <laughs> off my life and raised my blood pressure. I'm glad we don't have to go down that route. Um, I will say that I enjoyed all the cameos, but that's because I like pop culture and the cameos no, are no. fun. It was it was stupid. Me. It was like that. It was like the Imagination Land episode of South Park. It was fucking ridiculous. It was, it was so dumb. Yeah, it was, it was so uh, dumb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was Lord of the Rings with trademarks fighting against the race of men. Basically. It was just fucking stupid. You just read my fucking mind because I was going to go the entire time that big battle is happening. All I could hear in my head was imagination. <laughs> <Yeah>. Imagination. <laughs> It was so, so dumb, I, and then like it couldn't like it couldn't have gotten dumber than it did in the last like fifteen minutes with all that cheese and the implication that whatever the fuck his name was was like an angel. Like, wait, if you're dead, how, if you're not an AI, then what are you? And he's like something else entirely, and then fades he away. It's like, yeah, come on, he just Steve. does the he just does the Wayne's World scene change. Dilly, 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 and he's fucking gone. <laughs> Uh, I, I like this guy held his hands up in, in unison with me. Mm -hmm. um, here's, I'll, I'll always doodly doop with you, man. You let me know whatever you want to doodly doop. Uh, here's how annoyed I am by this news. The, the description of the sequel book, because these are based on books, if you guys didn't know, uh, is I can't tell it apart from the original. So the, the synopsis is in this news article. I'm going to read it to you. I wish I wouldn't have told you it was the synopsis for two, so I could have said guess which one. Days after Oasis founder James Halliday's contest, Wade Watts makes a discovery that changes everything. Hidden within Halliday's vaults, waiting for his heir to find, 
lies a technological advancement that will once again change the world and make the Oasis a thousand times more wondrous and addictive than even Wade dreamed possible. What? I fell asleep did halfway they, through did, that. What, did, can did you they say cop, one more time? Did they did they copy and paste that from the synopsis of the first one? <laughs> that's that's my fucking point. Like I don't understand. Like it, it says I don't know what nothing. that means. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything to me at all. Like at all. It was like buzzwords and like I McGuffin. Didn't that, didn't that guy die in the first one already? Is he? Did he come back and die again? Like <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, he's, Jesus Christ. He's still dead. Apparently, he just had something hidden in his vault after Wade won the contest. And the I don't fuck. It sounds stupid. It sounds like he was forced into writing a sequel book that he never planned on writing yeah. because of the popularity. Three days was later, like, something else happens. By the way, like yeah. Oh, BT Dubs. Right after this story <laughs> wraps up, I, I, same, we, same we, thing we've had, happens. We've again. had a conversation about like we, we've had a conversation before about like obviously char- it's boring for a character to be resolved forever, but that doesn't mean we need to hear whatever the next fucking step of the story is, especially if it's like. A, a fucking Groundhog Day, Bill Murray, endless loop of the same fucking shit again and again. Are we gonna yeah. make it a tri- are we gonna make it a trilogy? Please, because uh, most most games nowadays minimum are four player. Minimum, if you're if you're playing team, if you're playing team, how how many do we need? So that's what right Couch now co-op. the three of us need to make an oath pact with one another that we okay. will not spend any money on this movie. Uh, and you yeah, two listeners, if you when you hear this, please, uh, just to dissuade them from making a third one. Like we we have to do our part is what I'm saying. We're all warriors here. Okay. Don't go see this movie. We don't want ready player three. So just let it die at ready player two. Just don't go see it. We yeah. won't either. And then we won't have to talk about ready player three or go see it. That's the right. idea. We've because all even, entered into even, this together. And yeah, <laughs> even we're all in a blood pact. Cut your hand right now. Touch your <laughs> touch your mobile phone or your. I don't have anything sharp. Okay, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did it. You guys just totally can't see it, and I'm so brave. I didn't wince at the pain. Um, I we're already gonna. We already know we're doomed to talk about the second one because it's no. moving forward. Like yeah. we're gonna end up having to talk about mm-hmm. it. Uh, and please don't punish us with a third one. Just help us. Don't do it for us. Just don't go see right it. now. Yeah. Here's the thing. I didn't even finish reading the synopsis. It gets worse because it gets more samey. Let me read how? a couple lines to the rest of it. No, yeah, yeah. You say how now? Wait for yeah, it. Ready? How? With it comes a new riddle and a new quest. A last Easter egg from Halliday hinting at a mysterious prize. Wasn't the last Easter egg in the first movie was like he died and he left a, a last Easter egg? Yeah. Anyway, and an unexpected and possible. Mean- Sorry, unexpected and possibly powerful and dangerous new rival awaits one who will kill millions to get what he wants. Like the company in the first film that wanted the guy. This guy's just a narcissistic Willy Wonka, like a more narcissistic (laughs) Willy Wonka. Like he has a fucking scavenger hunt. He dies and never has to go on a scavenger hunt forever. It's like, did you ever ever date somebody who like did a scavenger hunt for like a special occasion? And at first it was at first it was cute. But then you're on like clue 17. You're like. When the fuck can I go home and get yeah. my dick sucked for my birthday? Like, when do I get to go home? Like, just imagine how angry the author was when he realized it was a success and they wanted him to make another one because he was so angry. He took it out on his protagonist. He was like, fuck this Wade Watts guy. He only gets three days to rest and then you're doing it again. <laughs> like, he's so sadistic that he's just torturing his imaginary characters. I literally, I mean, it, it weighs life in the future of the Oasis are again at stake. Three days fucking later, everything's at stake all over again. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's almost like everything that just happened didn't fucking matter. And this probably won't either. <laughs> also, Simon Pegg doing an American accent is the worst fucking thing in the world every single time. Even in the boys, it bothers me. It's oh, just I forgot like, about that. Uh, it's so bad. But it, the, the most criminal is ready player one. He really likes, see, he sells it like this. It's, it's so bad. It's terrible. Just go again, when we're done. That's it. I'm not a vending machine. You can't put a <laughs> coin in me and get whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> when we're done, dance. <laughs> when we're done, go just YouTube it. It's really, it's atrocious. I didn't even remember that Simon Pegg was in that movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what about if I put two quarters in you? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> which 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 end of the quarter is going in? Are they room uh, temperature? It's up to you to decide. Uh, are, they, are they are they cold? <laughs> Maybe I can Chinese finger trap him with quarters. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and then in reverse entropy, it's the same exact thing. Doesn't matter which there it's, but you know, both, right? Whatever. It depends on how that's big your the, how big your, wing, entropy, your wingspan uh, is. Answer. I don't know if you can reach both ends of Derek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, moving distance. along. This is a weird one, huh? We had a trailer here for a series coming to Netflix called The History of Swear Words. It comes out in just a few short days, like seven, a week from now, I think, seven days. Oh, that's yeah. good news. Um, January 5th, yeah. The person leading this series is none other than Nicolas Cage, our face-off champion. I um, I included this in the document for no other reason than the fact that it, it looks part ludicrous, part mm-hmm. interesting. Like, I actually kind of want to watch the fucking thing. Mm-hmm. In part educational. And I wanted your boy's thoughts on it. Scott, how did you feel about this trailer? Uh, I mean, when I saw Nick Cage, I was ready for it to be just a complete shit show, but it seems like they have a lot of people involved in it. Yeah, it's not just him. Yeah, it's, 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 it is it's it is going to be like history of the words, obviously, where they came from, what they meant originally, how they became slang terminology for something terrible. Um, right. Like, I saw they gave, they gave a brief synopsis of fuck, which was like, basically, it was, you got a fuck notice from the, it was permission to fuck from the king. Right, for, for, yeah, for, it actually for, it stood for, for something. For, fornication, unify something. I think that they were saying that that was a false uh, rumor about the origins of the word "fuck." Though. Oh, wow. Uh, ah, yeah. okay. I've also heard that there was a king fuck, and he was a piece of shit, and they used to pull their bows back with their middle with their middle fingers. So like, okay. so when they would catch bowers, they would cut. The, it's not, it's not real. But they, 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 they <laughs> don't get they, excited. It's not real. Yeah, yeah. They, they would, they would cut bowers' fingers off, so they couldn't pull the string back anymore. So they used to flip people off. So it's like, yeah, you didn't get our fucking fingers. Fuck you. Yeah, no. Right. But I also heard that from a woman who <laughs> was she an astrology hoe? Would you describe her as an, no, no, as an art no. hoe? No, no, no hoes here, Derek. All right, no, no, no hoes today. <laughs> So this was a, this was someone who I was friends with when I was in like high school's mom. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so a hoe of yesterday. Can't be mean to her mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's a nice lady. No, uh, no, she was terrible. But <laughs> Derek, how'd you feel about this trailer? Uh, it's the first thing in the doc this week that I'm super looking forward to. Uh, yeah, it, All right. yeah. I, I love documentaries. I love just learning about shit. I love learning about dumb shit that really doesn't matter. Um, even more so. And I love Nick Cage. Like I, I think Nick Cage, like unironically, like, uh, it's a mixture, right? It's ironic and unironic. I mean, you can't watch some of those, uh, scream compilations and say that you, <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter <laughs> that you unironically <laughs> think that that's good acting. However, uh, I, I fucking love oh Nick God. Cage. I think this looks really funny and I think it looks interesting. So I'm super into it. Um, I have I have two real petty things to say. Um, well, no, just one real petty thing. Uh, and that that is that. Can we just tell Nick Cage like no one cares if he goes gray? Like there's way too much hair dye yeah, okay, on fair. him in that trailer. Yeah. And it's like he just dumped his head. He's like Rudy Giuliani hair dye. He just dumped his head in a fucking sink of brown hair. It looks bad. He's not leaking just, yet, but he'll get there. Just go, uh, just, did you just, just post go gray, a picture bro. of him? <laughs> yeah. That's why Derek started cracking That's why up. That's I was laughing. Yeah. Uh, all, and yeah, the second one was just, can we all just appreciate the fact that the trailer literally opens up with him screaming fuck at the top of his lungs for a solid five seconds. I mean, just a class act. It was pretty juicy. Around. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I'm, juice. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at uh, it. I, at first, I, I think Nick, Nick Cage was what roped me in. But when I saw the list of people involved, he's probably the person I'm least excited to see in it at this point. Yeah. No, when I realized yeah, I mean, there was going to be like legitimate investigation and kind of historical that stuff interests me that's the kind of thing i would if i saw it on like the history channel i would stop and watch it yeah um and and i'm definitely looking forward to it so it's cool to know that something is coming out during (laughs) during this fucking pandemic season something's still getting made even if it's nick cage in a room screaming fuck at us for you know half hour episodes at a time i I just hope they do like uh, an episode on the word cunt oh absolutely they have to that's one of the good ones yeah yeah i mean you know, is it does it really mean see you next Tuesday? <laughs> Inquiring minds must know. <laughs> Guess we'll have to wait for the show to find out. Uh, yeah. All right. Next up on the docket. So, uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> so we have I mean, as far as we can review news, that's really it. We have two pieces of Warner Brothers news and then we're going to go right into our Wonder Woman 84 review um, of which I really have no idea what I'm walking into. Like, I don't know. How these guys felt about the film and I and I, I whatever I'm not gonna 
not going to bury the lead here. So the, the if two we're pieces- gonna, I'm sorry, if we're going to if we're going to do like a, a one, two and then punch right into Wonder Woman, I should probably go pee now just to. Oh, that's just fine. So we can yeah, yeah. flow a little, you know. Yeah. Maybe heavy flow. Yeah. Heavy flow. Even flow. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take a minute here to do our, our mid pod shilling as per usual. Mm-hmm. Um, Scott, why don't we, we'll trade off. Where can people find us if they want to ask us a question? Uh, you can find us on Twitter. You can do a hashtag ask TCN. If you want to ask us some questions. Uh, if we fuck something up, if we get something wrong. You guys can keep hitting us with the hashtag fuck TCN. Uh, we are on Twitter at the Schmeg nerd because the cynical nerd was taken. We still haven't gotten it back from that fucker either. I mean, I can hunt him. I don't even have a. I don't even have a name. I got nothing. Anyway, uh, all, you can all, also. All I need is a scent, you know. <laughs> just and with the, with those types, it's always just Cheetos, maybe, maybe some Doritos, Mountain Dew. This this slight smell of citrus and and uh, synthetic coriander. sugar. Oh, yeah. Okay, I was, I was going to go with coriander because it sounded <laughs> more apropos. <laughs> um, you can also what? email us at questions at the cynical nerd dot com. Uh, we check that email address. I check it once a week. Uh, if you want to find us on Facebook, it's just facebook.com slash the cynical nerd. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, yeah, uh, we also, what, what, what was it? What was it? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, you can also go to <laughs> www.thecynicalnerd.com. Uh, yeah. you can grab the RSS feed right off the website. You know, obviously we're on Spotify. We're on Apple music. We're on Google. Uh, but you can always grab the RSS feed and put it in wherever you guys want to listen to us on. Yeah. That's what, uh, we, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, we also all stream. Uh, we we we've been doing our best to do weekly uh, Wednesday night co streams. Uh, yeah. but with the holidays it's been a little hectic. I think we might be back to normal this week, maybe. Um, I kind of got the the feeling from from Derek here that it was going to be after the holidays. I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I mean, like you were saying, it's been a little hectic with the holidays. That Derek's been trying to work to get that paper, get that money. Yep. So, uh, you know, we're all we're all still streaming, though. Um, Scott and I, Scott, how, we're, we're, what's your handle? Uh, I am Swearwolf. That's S-W-E-A-R-W-O-L-F-E. Uh, I'm on Twitch. I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm streaming on YouTube and Facebook gaming as well. And uh, having a lot of fun, man. Playing how, a little you, weird. how you feeling about Facebook gaming? You still on the fence about it? Uh, Facebook gaming is all right. It's it's OK. But it's it's weird. It's weird because like you see people's real names, yeah. Uh, and and I, I see a lot of names recently in the Facebook gaming chat that I don't know. I don't know these people. I've never like they must have found me randomly. Maybe they found me through the podcast or through one of you guys. Like I know you tag me and stuff on Facebook all the time. Uh, but I'll see like new people. I'll be like, oh, I, I mean, I guess I'm making friends. But it's weird that like I don't like I know your name, but I don't know you. Like it makes yeah. me a little uncomfortable. I give your full yeah. name and address out to. Just about everyone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's, he printed it on little little cards. He mm-hmm. just hands it out. Uh, yeah. the, the 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 man who screams is that you? Is that was that your friend? Your buddy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my bud. Okay. Okay. He's always screaming. That guy. <laughs> nah. He's always screaming. Uh, Derek, we were he's we naked. were doing co- covered in something. I don't know if it's blood or mud or. <laughs> uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> we were doing our uh our our streaming handle, so you got back just in time. Um, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter. At TCN Place, I'm only streaming on Twitch at the moment until uh, Glimish re- comes out because I think we we're all going to give it a try and try yeah. to do some co-stream and stuff. I, I was yeah. very much looking forward to that. Yep. Uh, I, did, have they announced a release date on that service yet? Uh, it's it's it was supposed to be by the end of this year, uh, but they've kind of been operating uh, on a week to week basis. We're going to get two weeks notice before the uh, the site goes up. Everyone can start uh, accessing their profiles now. You can make your profiles. You can start customizing stuff, start adding people, following people, uh, put your schedule up. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do uh, at glimish.com uh, backslash whatever your, your, your name's going to be. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think it's .tv still, right? It may be. Or, anyway, uh, uh, Derek, what about you? What, what, what's your handles? You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Dr. Gloom MD, which is D R G L O O M M D. Uh, I haven't been streaming at all this month because I've been doing some overtime at work. Uh, but starting next year, I'm going to pick it back up. So that's Twitch and Twitter. Dr. Gloom MD. 
Oh, very nice. I think we really need to start doing uh, douchebags and dragons again. I, yeah. I, I'm with you. I, I, I'm ready to, yeah. I'm ready to take the fucking plunge. Yeah. I'll yeah. start some new tunes. Yeah. On I'm retail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be a good time. Yeah. For sure. Um, okay. So two pieces of, of DC related moo- uh, news. I said moose. That's, uh, we're not cows over here. And then we're going to get to our Wonder Woman 1984 review. Uh, Warner Brothers plans on future DC properties. They've announced that they have a new, Strategy, they're going to try and release these bigger tentpole DC films to theaters, do smaller films to HBO Max with an eye on, I guess they're basically approaching every property as what's the HBO Max spinoff. Um, I, this is where I think Derek's creeping in on me again, because when I hear this, I just kind of like rolled my fucking eyes and I was like, really? Not everything needs a spinoff. As you I don't should. need to, <laughs> as you should. There's not everything needs a spinoff. You're going to inundate the market. You've already inundated the market. Like Jesus Christ. Like, I don't know. It just, it made me very cynical when I read this. I'm I'm glad as a DC fan, because I've mentioned it several times before. If I have to choose, you know, not like current content quality aside, I would prefer the the DC pantheon of superheroes to the Marvel ones. But yeah. It, yeah, well, go fuck yourself. It makes me happy from that perspective. The, I want to see more of those stories being told, the ones that I really enjoy. I I just don't want. I don't. I don't want it. I don't want more of this stuff. I don't want a spinoff series for every DC film that comes out. I think it's a stupid fucking idea. I think they need to actually focus on getting like a decent number of DC films <laughs> that are good yeah. under their belt before they do stuff like that. So I don't know. I from a from an organizational strategic standpoint makes me a little happier just from knowing it's coming. It makes me super fucking sad. And with that, <laughs> how do you feel about it, Scott? I feel like I'm watching like an early 2000s vampire movie, like like Disney. Like if you get bit by a, a multi-billion dollar conglomerate, you become one. Is that like, is that what happens? Like, <laughs> like, 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 like we're seeing, we're seeing like, all right, first of all, Star Wars was appropriated by Disney. Let's call it what it was. They literally stole a man's hopes and dreams, his entire life's work shat all over the legacy m- packaged it marketed it and sold it to you as breakfast cereal fucking action figures everything like if, if they could sell you a baby yoda butt plug or a porg butt plug they fucking do it they're soulless they are evil well, having said that star wars was always about action figures though wasn't it i mean, I mean it always sold toys i mean yeah yeah but that took 30 that, well that took like 20 years in the making i mean yeah. like when star wars well i mean to the extent that it is now yeah, it felt it, it didn't feel like it was. It didn't feel like things were orchestrated to sell toys back then. It was just like there were so many characters like uh, eventually every literally everyone that was on screen in the original trilogy became an action figure. And I had them all when I was like 10 years old. Yeah, it's I more to, so now. I'll give you that. But it's always been I mean, it's always been about merchandise. I was going to say, I while I agree with your sentiment, I have to push back on that because li- just, literally they were trying to kill Han Solo in Return of the Jedi. And George Lucas said, you can't sell a dead Han Solo toy. Like they were, they've always been focused on action figures. That's always been a thing. But I agree with your sentiment because I mean, I mean, you know, but to a certain extent, though, like, like it, there's probably other reasons other than I don't want to kill him because I want to sell an action figure. It's also probably just like this is one of the few like genuinely likable characters we have. Yeah, and it's like, wh- wh- what would be the point though of of making you wait an entire two years to see Jedi to have Han Solo get killed off in the first half of the movie? People have been fucking furious. It, it, sure. I mean, like you, they killed Han off in uh, the Force Awakens, and people were pissed. You, see, you can't kill Harrison Ford. You can't do it. He's a national treasure. He's Indiana Jones. Even when he desperately wants to be killed off, as he did in Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I just wish they wouldn't have brought him back at all. I thought that you meant was... Harrison Ford desperately wanted to be killed off, like <laughs> as Harrison Ford. I was like, ooh, I didn't know that about. I mean, he did crash his plane, bro. He maybe he's a cry for help. <laughs> too too much. <laughs> I feel like not enough. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, Scott. You were you were uh, talking about well, this no. move. Well, no, it's just it's just oversaturation. Like Disney has oversaturated the superhero game like tenfold. There's no, there, it's inarguable. So I think some of them work very well. Most of them are okay for what they are. But we're at the point now where it's like it's reached critical mass, and there's too much of everything, even for me, somebody who like up until Endgame didn't think it was. Like that, I mean, it was a little much, but it wasn't like out of control until now. Now it's out of fucking control. We're seeing the same thing with Star Wars since Disney acquired that property. 
And now it's like other companies feel like they have to create these equally like equal, equal in scope and scale universes. And there has to be all these different properties tied together or else they're not going to be able to make a profit. They're not going to compete with what Disney has built. And that I think is like, it's going to ruin everything. Honestly, mm-hmm. like, I, like it's going to be oversat. Anything you like, you're going to get sick of it because they're going to shove it down your throat until you can't, until you physically can't bring yourself to spend money on it anymore. You just it, gave me like a profound realization. One might even call it an epiphany, which is really that like the biggest thing that Disney has done to fuck up the industry is not that they purchased star Wars and, and, Disney, uh, Star Wars and Marvel and have this huge and Pixar and have this huge corner of the entertainment market to themselves. It's that not only have they done that and they are oversaturating the market, but they're making all of their competitors feel that the only way they'll be able to compete is to do the same fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, bringing the entire industry down. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a great time to be a fan, but it's going to be one of those things where, like, nothing's going to be sacred. Right. Like you mean like like think about like again, like think about Star Wars when we grew up. Think about going to see the Phantom Menace as a kid. That was like the one of the biggest nights of your life at that point if you were like a ten year old kid and a huge Star Wars fan. I remember it. Yeah, dude, same. I I remember seeing that movie like three or four times. And as a kid, I as a kid I didn't really care how bad Jake Lloyd was. It had lightsabers and pod rate. It was incredible. And the the more Star Wars movies we see, the less special they are to a certain extent. Like it's some some things still really hit the right notes. Some things really like still take us back to that initial like jarring moment when you first saw something like Star Wars. Um, uh, but at the same time, like n- like it's 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 basically like factory farms for for entertainment now. Like yeah. they're gonna, they're they're gonna take they're gonna beat everything they can out of the source material until it's worthless, and then they're gonna throw it away. And they're gonna find something else to, to fuck over. Or they'll wait five years and then reboot it because who gives a fuck now? We can reboot the same franchise four times or three times in a ten year cycle because who gives a shit? People are, people already proved they're going to pay for it. They don't care. Yeah, and it's just I don't know, man. It's it's hate not going to be good. Me. I mean, you had said yeah. that it's like it's a good time to uh, it's a good time to be a fan or something. I honestly think with a lot of these industries, it's not a good time to be a fan. Um, I I, I don't want to um sound too pessimistic here but like my concern with you know we're talking about star wars is like they saw essentially the success of the mandalorian um commercial and critical like obviously everybody talks about how great it is and that's why they felt emboldened to announce fucking 10 shows or nine shows whatever it was and it's like there's just no way like it's purely a numbers game at this point they know that there's no way that all 10 of those shows are going to be bangers the way that Mandalorian is. So at this right. point, it's just putting out shit content with as many fucking chuds as you can scrounge up to like direct, <laughs> uh, act and, and edit these things. It's like, it's going to be primarily nonsense. And now like these beloved franchises that we grew up on, that we were a part of a subculture initially, they're a part of the norm. And so like, not that I want to sound like I'm gatekeeping cause I'm not, I really feel like the more people that are in, uh, uh, you know, are, are a, you the gatekeeper? I am the master. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the more people that are in, the more opinions, the more viewpoints you have within a subculture, the more diverse it is, and the more interesting it is, the more lifelike it is. Um, but I just think that we're gonna see, um, these more like niche things become just much more common and much more comprised of nonsense. And we're going to have to search through our own, you know, uh, uh, fandoms to find the gems. That's that's what I think right. is coming in the next couple of years. Well, see, but I think that's what makes it a good time to be a fan, though. Like, there's going to be a little something for everyone. Like, sure, it's not all going to hit for everybody. There's a lot of stuff that we don't want to see that we're rolling our eyes at. But there's going to be like a six year old kid who's really excited to see this or that. Or maybe, you know, somebody who's been a lifelong fan of a character and never thought they'd see the day where they'd get, you know, even a 10 part miniseries, let alone a recurring See, like a recurring seasons of a show, you know what I mean? Like, right? Like, we, like I, I'll be honest, none of us here probably are, are going to sip for the the Falcon or the Winter Soldier. There, there might be a story to tell there, but there is somebody who's been a lifelong Bucky fan for one reason or another. Maybe somebody who lost a limb in, in, in military service and always loved the character for that reason. The people yeah. have personal attachments to characters that we may not be able to fully ever understand. You know what I mean? And as a fan, there's something for everyone. Now, you know what I mean? Like it's become such a common household thing to love Star Wars. And love superhero movies. Uh, and I don't think it's necessarily bad to tap into each of those individual markets. I just think if you're not going to handle everything like you give a shit about it, that's where it becomes a problem. Right. 
You know, if you're if yeah. if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're essentially like you guys say, like throwing some shit at the wall to see what sticks, that's where it's a problem. If something's not for me, but it's still handled with care and respect, cool. But yeah. when you see like when you see people just following this business model, we're like, it's inarguable that like for every good movie we get in the MCU, there's like at least one or two flops that kind of were filler in the middle, and they were there to fill a slot, not to tell a story that needed to be told. Right. And and how much is that? How how's that going to translate to TV where it's literally. 10 episodes a season or eight episodes a season. And we're getting 80 episodes, uh, you know, 80 episodes of, of content for a streaming service. Yeah. I, I mean, I very much agree. We're kind of belaboring the same points here. It seems like we're all basically on the same page, but the optimist in me is okay, cool. Some of these properties, some of these um, characters that I want to see come to the big screen might actually get their, their due. You know, the New York times was speculating. It was on a quote from Hamada, but speculating that uh, films the Warner Brothers deems slightly quote unquote riskier like Batgirl Static Shock who I don't even know who the fuck that is I feel like I've heard the name before I don't really Bro, know who that is yo Static Shock was a dope cartoon man <laughs> oh wait wait wait, wait, wait. okay it was oh, are you being serious right now oh I yeah. thought you were I thought you were doing a bit I thought it was a superhero <laughs> that like rubs their socks on the carpet and then <laughs> no, no, he, something. he uh he he, yeah, dude. he gets electrocuted and he, he becomes like a I don't know. He, he can control electricity, <laughs> but he, he be- through his socks. You make it sound no. so cool. Please keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I might be a little. I might be a little out of it right now. Um, uh, but yeah, no, but, he, but he floats around on a fucking statically charged manhole cover. Like he uses it. He uses electricity to do all this cool Magneto esque shit. It does but look fuck, cool. Shut up, Derek. Fuck yeah, fuck you, man. No, it's very cool. I agree. Yeah, but but also but also <laughs> but but also. Uh, back around, like I think it may have even been before Miles Morales ha- had become a character. He was uh, Static Shock was like uh, like a young person of color who was a superhero, mm-hmm. like, yeah. lesser known, but like it was it was a, a cartoon that came on every Saturday morning. So it was it was cool to see like positive representation and to see like right. somebody be able to you know see themselves in a hero in that way. Um, I I don't know who would possibly play that character in live action. That would be kind of cool to speculate about, but it it was like kind of a. I think it came on after Freakazoid, so it wasn't like an A list. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. hear, hearing that name, I, I forgot the show it even existed until you read that. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like I said, I part of me is excited because some of these lesser known, you know, characters are going to get some time in the spotlight. But the other half of me just thinks that that the more they do means the less quality is devoted to each of them, which means that we're probably going to get a decent amount of shit in there. I, I don't, I don't know. Look, it. The Peacemaker spinoff from Suicide Squad, I'm on board with because we know talents attached to it and it should generally be exciting. So I guess what we're going to have to do is as, as podcast hosts is to do our due diligence and just, uh, you know, kind of uh, speculate on all new <laughs> shows that get announced, figure out what talents attached and we'll weed out which ones we think will be good and which ones will be shitty. I mean, what else can we do besides wait until they come out? Right. So, yeah, yeah listeners, we'll we'll go in. We'll see if they're good and then we'll let you know. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah. You it. guys don't have to. You come here for all your news. We'll tell you yeah. if it's good or shit. If you have to waste your money or not. Um, on the heels of Ooh. that DC news, what's up? Did anybody watch Star Girl season two yet? We never found out what happened. No. To that, Jim, that Jim Gaffigan pen. Has anybody seen I, it yet? I, I haven't watched. <laughs> a Is that season air? One. Is that like a, the the Jim Gaffigan pen thing happened already? I don't I, think I, it's I, out yet. Is it not? No. Okay. I I don't think so. I could be wrong. Let me see. Star Girl season two release. Do you think in... if I skip season one, I'll get what's going on? <laughs> no, you have to watch the entire thing. Uh, no, nah, it hasn't aired yet. Season two airs spring twenty twenty one. Right. Don't you hate when someone asks you that though? Like, I haven't seen seasons one through four. Do you think I'll be confused on season five? Yeah, you fucking idiot. You will be confused. <laughs> At least give me the synopsis. Years. <laughs> Stupid dickhead. I mean, unless you're, uh, unless you're watching a show where it doesn't make sense no matter what, like Shameless. Remember that fucking show? Like every <laughs> Yeah, you really can come in yeah, or ever yeah, like, leave for a yeah, season or two, come back. Yeah, it's always it's just pressure. like, it, it's always chaos. Somebody, somebody, yeah, like somebody has a drug problem. Somebody's getting fucked in the cooler of a department store or a fucking. Oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't seen it. I have to check it out. Yeah, you can start uh, wherever. You're fine. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, 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 no matter what episode you watch, you're gonna see William H Macy do his O face, and it's gonna be terrible. <laughs> oh no! That guy fucked uh, for for somebody who 100 percent definitely smells like his own balls and feet. That character <laughs> fucks so much on that show. <laughs> Frank fucks uh, all the time. It makes no sense. 
Sorry, Frank's portrayed by act, actor uh, Shillian H. H. Mercy. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Shillian Sh- 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 H. Mercy. Yes. <laughs> Shillian. Okay. Very good. Uh, right on the heels. This is the prequel to our main topic today. The Wonder Woman three film has been fast tracked by Warner Brothers. Patty Jenkins is announced to return based off of the opening weekend performance of the film. Uh, interesting factoid there. They said all about half of HBO Max subscribers watched it on Christmas Day, which is quite a large number that's yeah. what they, they had what's like at least four to eight four to six million people i think did mm. did patty jenkins crack a giant golden whip when she announced she was doing wonder woman 3 i don't i don't think that she did but she might have told a heartfelt story about how her father was a whip manufacturer <laughs> and that's how she knows better how to tell the story um i have a very specific vision in mind moving into our wonder woman debut conversation which is that I very much want Derek to start off and tell me how he felt about it. Um, uh, about Wonder Woman? Yes. Oh, damn. I wanted to go last, but uh, you no, know what? I want. Let's do it. That's I want, okay. Let's do it. That's fine. No, this is good. We're I, just jumping right uh, into Wonder Woman 84 then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. We, should, we, should, we shouldn't take like 15 to 20 minutes and tell an elaborate backstory about one of our lives that has nothing to do with the story at all. Should we do that first? No, I, can tell, I, can tell, I, I can tell the story about how the boat sank again. We, we never aired that, right? <laughs> and, and since and since you already heard the story it'll be just as boring as the opener of wonder woman and you can nod in and out and it won't matter uh but you know what before derek starts uh just a factoid about that because i did jump very quickly into the movie uh wonder woman earned 16.7 million at the domestic box office that number is the largest amount of money any film during the pandemic has earned which is kind of fucking crazy that's a very low yeah sum of money That's the most money any film has made on release combined with worldwide release box offices from the weekend before Christmas because it released early overseas. Uh, The movies made 85 million box office worldwide so far, along with, you know, like I said, just about half that watched it. How much do do we know? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I don't know what the budget is, but I can tell you in a minute. um, I would like real real quick. Do you hear how I do you hear how like tired, stupid me ask that? (laughs) How, how spend it? <laughs> no, no one's gonna. Is that, is no that one, what you said? Yeah, I didn't no one's gonna it. call yeah, you I that. I was tired too. <laughs> how spend it? But I noticed. I didn't notice that. You, like your 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 like face and motion was like you were a reporter at a press conference. <laughs> yeah. Like Mr. President. It's well, very good. Uh, all right. I, I actually, while Chris is looking that up, I'll just get started. I owe both of you an apology. I take back everything that I ever said about. Um, uh, Captain America Civil War, because compared to this movie, that movie was a fucking masterpiece. It's fucking <laughs> Citizen Kane. It's it's just beautiful. Uh, uh, Civil War, that is. This movie was fucking embarrassing. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think that Scott liked this. I have no idea how Chris feels about it. I, this is why I w- wanted to go last. I'm still going to tell you how I this felt. This is why about I wanted it, you to go first, because I wanted your unabashed Straight out the gate. I didn't want to give away my game face, tell you how I felt about right. it. I, I wanted pure Derek out of the tap. You know what I'm saying? It was terrible. The scene where she um, uses the whip on the missile to get forward to Spider-Man in to save the kids was the worst fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. My eyes immediately, instantaneously disintegrated into dog shit and then went straight <laughs> to hell. It's the fucking worst <laughs> thing. It never had to happen. It never had to happen. None of this, but that was the worst offender of the whole movie. Uh, in all seriousness, I tried the, the opening scene. I was like, whoa, like this is cheesy as fuck. Like this is too campy. First of all, fuck you guys. If you liked this for, for shitting all over Raimi Spider-Man for it being campy and liking Patty Jenkins, fucking wonder woman, 84 shame on you. Um, Secondly, I, I did try like I know some movies, they have like a tone that's not like typical or whatever. So like I was really trying to like shift myself into liking it. And for the first like third of it, it kind of worked. Uh, and then like there's just these dumb scenes and like constant close up slow mos of her like looking heroic. It was just like embarrassing. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It just wasn't. It just it just didn't fucking hit for me at all. I really did try. I want you guys to know that I tried to like this, but it was so fucking corny to me. Also, okay. are we OK with uh, Wonder Woman just like fucking the unconscious uh, body of like an unconsenting man? OK, a yeah. little weird, a yeah. little weird to have that be the hook. 
Mm-hmm. Giving giving no thoughts away about how I felt about it because I want Scott to go second. I will say that it raises a lot of interesting questions about what's considered no. okay. No, All right, I thought you were going to say a different word. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, I don't mean... use that word. <laughs> <laughs> don't use... Nuh-uh. Even tired me knows not to say that. I was going to say, ooh. <laughs> no, anyway. yeah. uh, Scott, how did you feel about Wonder Woman 1984? Some things in it work for me. But again, you have to understand, I, I had very, very low expectations going into this. Patty, Patty Jenkins is, I think, a, a really good director. I, th- I, think she, I think she did a great job with both of these films. But she also, there's something about these movies, man, where they take fucking forever to get to the point, And when they get there, it's lackluster. Like the antagonist in the first one, we talked about how Ares was lacking, partially because of who was cast to play him. You know, somebody who looked like the father from fucking Jumanji. You know what I mean? Like, like what the, 84. We're, we're, we're focused on 84. But the thing is, it, <laughs> but the thing is, it matters because these movies are parallel. They both lack a proper antagonist. Uh, Pedro Pascal, I thought was, I thought he was pretty good in this. Honestly, he was. I think he was one of the highlights of it. Um, but his character, like, we we don't understand his motivation. He just he just wants more and more and more. But it, it's he are, he gets to a point where he has everything he wanted and still just keeps consuming. We're supposed to assume it's because. He, the god is is driving him, but we never see the face of the god. We never really realize the god is a true antagonist. So we're just left with this hollow vessel full of greed, and that's our villain, you know. And on, on the opposite spectrum, you have Kristen Wiig who smoke show. Yeah, like it's. I mean, she started off looking like she was playing a character in SNL, like from like and a I weird st- dinner, from like a weird yeah. dinner 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 party skit, and then like she's in a little black dress. I'm in love with her again. It's like I'm watching SNL circa you know 2015. Uh, and then at the end, she goes off. She goes full furry on us. No, no, sorry. First, she goes crust punk on us. And I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, the I crust punk phase was a little. Yeah. Unexpected. But they, 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 we, we talk about Edward Nygma people like we, we shot on people. We shot on, <laughs> we shot on Jamie Foxx for being Edward Nygma. And they also Edward Nygma her like we've seen this so many times. Can we just stop? Can she just be like a normal ass person? Does she have to be like like the super rejected? Like, let me tell me nobody saw her and was like, damn, if she like took those glasses off. And didn't wear shoulder pads. Thank you for saying show. that. I hate that yeah. trope yeah. in movies that's yeah. existed since the fucking 70s where you take the yeah. beautiful woman and yeah. you just put her hair up and put glasses on and nobody notices her. Like, come yeah. on, do some facial prosthetics or something. Like, I don't believe yeah. that. That's so fucking dumb. <laughs> like, she, how she are we still jowls, doing this? She needs to have jowls or some kind of growth on her face. Yeah. That, like, goes over. <laughs> <laughs> or like visible herpes. If it's not yeah. visible, who cares? But when it's visible, <laughs> you stay away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um, when, when it's not visible don't ask don't tell you know exactly <laughs> no, but, it, but it's ridiculous though like again like i thought there were parts of it that worked parts of it didn't the intro feels like we're watching like a triathlon at like a summer camp we don't we don't even attend <sighs> like why are we here why do we give a shit the, yeah. the idea that this little girl would almost win but but she would learn the hard lesson that you can't fucking cheat well like like really but but did she really cheat she lost her horse had to take a shortcut to get her fucking horse back and still won. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was a dickhead horse issue. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we've all suffered them. <laughs> we've all been there. We, we've all played, uh, the Ocarina of time. Nice. <laughs> Got it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Been working on we all, we, practicing we're, we're in the mirror. I can we, tell. We, we, we've all, we've all, we've all, I've, I've been practicing. I've been sounding it out phonetically when y'all aren't here. <laughs> Whenever, whenever I start the call and you guys don't join, I just sit here saying. I was going to say in a Discord call by yourself, <laughs> saying, "Oh, nope, nope, nope." Oh, got got it. It. No, hang on. Rhymes with Macarena. Come I'm on, Scott, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but but like the, the beginning takes way too long. Like it it doesn't. Steve coming back. It, it like why did he have to possess somebody? If she wished him into existence, yeah. would lose her powers as a result. That seems stupid to me. I also unnecessary. just think Steve didn't need to come back. Even Captain America, the soft boy of fucking Marvel Cinematic Universe, fucking wakes up in the future and he's just like, oh, Peggy's dead. I'm going to fuck her niece. Like, w- he just does it. And he's a fucking pussy. Why did, she, why did we need to bring Steve back? It was just I don't a think weird he knew choice. she was her, her niece when he was banging her. I think that was like, did he? I don't hey, know. If he, if he did, then he's got some fetishes we don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think? Do you think old man Steve Rogers ever told his wife, "I fucked your niece"? Like, do, you, do you think? Do you think? Yo, 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 yo! You realize? You realize? There's a moment where Steve Rogers goes back in time, ends up with Peggy Carter. They have a beautiful life together. But one day, they're at a family party, and he sees a little blonde girl running around. He's like, "Oh shit!" She's like, she's like five years old. He's like, "Oh no! What have like, I hey. done?" 
Yeah, dude. Some dark implications. She for goes Kat. to hug him. He like just puts the hand on the forehead. Like, <laughs> yeah. Keeps her at arm's length. Close enough, little one. <laughs> oh, look at this fun game. I'm playing keep away. No, seriously, go away. Seriously, yeah. get the fuck away from me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, God, the, how did we get here? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve, Steve Rogers didn't need to come. No, that's not Steve Rogers. Uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> Tre- Trevor, sorry. Who fucking Steve Trevor. Handsome white guy didn't need to come back. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, um, Generic Chris actor of the MCU didn't yeah, need but, to come but, back. <laughs> but it's 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 this this formula she has where like Patty like Patty Jenkins makes movies like Nick tells stories. <laughs> Holy the, shit! Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listeners, have you ever had a, have you ever had a friend who goes way too in depth on the beginning of a story and you get to the payoff and that's where you should let you should layer in all that all that detail. You should paint me a, a picture with your words and then. Because you spent so much time, ex- like setting it up, they are visibly exhausted from telling their own story, and the end is like blink and you'll miss it. That feels to me like both Wonder Woman movies in a nutshell. There's so much buildup, so so many like long, like half the scenes could be half as long, and it would still tell the story it's trying to tell. But we'd have we'd have maybe more time to develop the antagonist, to develop the relationship between Wonder Woman and the antagonist. Fuck, man! If we, if we didn't spend thirty minutes o- on the island before Steve showed up. Imagine how much stronger they could have built the bond between uh, Gal Gadot and fucking Chris Pine in the first one. And then maybe him coming back would have some kind of emotional resonance in this one. Yeah. Fuck. I just didn't get why like him coming back was now granted in fairness, it's been a while since I've seen it, but like, uh, you know, when you have these great on screen romances that like are full of chemistry, you tend to remember them. And clearly, like, the fact that I don't remember it and the fact that they had very little chemistry in this movie shows me that it didn't really exist in the first one. So it's like, why was that such a necessary thing? Because it was so jarring to bring a dead character back to begin with. But the choice to like, exactly, like, if you have a wish, you have a fucking magic lamp in front of you. Why does he have to possess an already living human being? Like, why couldn't he just come back? It was just, it was just weird. Yeah. You know what I would wish for, Family Stone? All right, before we get too nitty gritty, uh, my turn. So, oh yeah, Chris didn't go yet. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> no, nah, it's okay. I was letting you get that point out, and then I was going to cut you off if you had tried to continue on to another uh, topic to dive into. So, I, you guys don't know how I feel about it. How can I say this? Mm. Mm. Was it not? A, was it not a joy? <laughs> well, Wonder Woman one was much better of a film. Um, uh, there here here's how I would put this. There are parts of this film that I liked more than the first, but the overall product was far less good than the first one. So here's what I mean. I'll give you a couple little examples. Um, I do think that Chris Pine and Gal Gadot have good chemistry. I think you're both crazy. I thought their relationship in the first one was great. And I thought the him coming back, I, one of the most emotional scenes in this film was her actually being the responsible superhero rescinding her wish, saying goodbye to him, like doing the right thing, doing the superhero fucking move. That's what you want to see from us. It was, it was redeeming to me. It was a good moment. Uh, I was also very sad because I, I liked the relationship, but there's a lot of problems with this movie. And as much as I, again, like you said, Pedro, pa- I thought Pedro Pascal was great, but he was playing with nothing. Mm-hmm. He had nothing to chew on. He, they were like, you're power hungry. Why? Well, we're going to do a, a, a 30 second flashback scene where we see you get beat up as a kid and that colors your entire character. That's all you have to work with. Yeah. Like, like his, his acting was great. And, and yeah, the fact that was good again, pulling details out uh, of the film that we can dive into later. But the fact that he doesn't just get owned by wonder woman at the end and the end result is him going back to his son and just like hugging him emotionally. That scene was emotional like him just kind of realizing he was being like a shitty fucking dude and stopping. I mean, you never see that in movies. So I thought that was cool. And there's I, probably I, a reason for that though, Chris. Well, true. Uh, you know, the whole like wish thing was, there's so many questions in like black holes that that opens up that where it just doesn't make any sense. If you dig in just, just a little bit beyond the surface. Uh, I mean that you guys bring up a good point, which I hadn't even thought of until now, which is that, the the whole premise of the stone is like you make a wish, but then something you don't expect happens. Right. So she makes a wish for Steve Trevor and then loses her power. So 
why does Steve Trevor's consciousness have to possess some random fucking dude? It's weird. Why doesn't he just magically appear? Yeah. Like that that's a great question I hadn't thought of until until this. Uh, like a legitimately good observation. Uh but Chris Kristen Wig smoke show whole way through. SNL version, black dress version, uh mm. spiky spiky vest version, the the hot topic one. I I'll take that too. Uh <laughs> her her fight scene at the end, the CGI was clearly poor because they kept it in the dark which is a, a real annoying and very obvious filmmaker technique when you have a CGI scene that you know is not going to look realistic, so you just put it in darkness. Hey, is that a kitty cat character? Is that like a character in DC, or do they like... Yeah, but she doesn't get her powers that way. Okay. Um, they totally changed the origin story. Cheetah is one of Wonder Woman's like biggest nemeses, though. Like right. that, Like a recurring villain, um, which is actually disappointing, because in that way, from someone who does enjoy... You see, I've never been a huge Wonder Woman reader. I'm a young white male. I read young white male books, and I understand that looks poorly on me in in 2020, but it's what I grew up with. You know, I grew mm-hmm. up reading Batman and, and Superman and Green Lantern and, and those guys. And to be quite honest with you, the Wonder Woman stuff has always been a bit fucking silly because I know I'm reading a superhero comic and I know stupid shit happens all the time. But I was like Amazonians. OK. And then like her big enemy is like a cheetah that's strong like it's weird to me but as i got older and they've done you know i've I've watched a lot of the dc animated stuff and a lot of that is gold and uh cheetah's been in that stuff and been compelling as a villain um i i just i don't know like like i said it's hard for me to wrap up this film without without saying that there are moments in it that i really for example a scene that i loved i loved and i you guys probably will not so i'm prepared for the smirks is uh her doing mine her her flying and they build it up so stupid and over the top but her actually flying i loved it i was like that's how they should have done superman's first flying scene like she looks like she's having a fucking joy you know that it's meaningful to her because she's thinking about steve trevor when she's flying like wonder woman's always been able to fly so i know some people are probably like well continuity she wasn't flying in bvs this is bullshit but i don't care because at this point their continuity is a jumbled fucking mess anyway so let her fly and she looked so happy doing it and it was i'd like got weirdly emotional about it like no tears or nothing but i was like oh this is like really kind of neat i like it a lot but there's just so much wrong with this film and i was so disappointed and uh i don't really know what else to say i, fi- Dude, I figured there is there's a lot and and i, I want to say just because you had mentioned it and i and i want to be fair and truly like as much as you know obviously i dog on a lot of films but i i really do try to find something that i like in everything because there is something that I think everybody would like in absolutely anything and everything. And so you had mentioned Pedro Pascal's uh, acting, which I thought was superb. Um, The scene with his son at the end that you had mentioned, I felt like if you had excited, like the the context was weird to just like let the guy who just like made the world almost kill itself, just like get away and like go talk to his son was like weird to me. But if you were to like take the scene with his son and just like excise it from this movie, Um, That was actually super touching. Like I actually got worked up and it's weird for me to like tear up to a film that I thought was so fucking bad, Um, but it was very touching. Maybe it's because I got a kid on the way and I'm turning into a gigantic fucking pussy. Who knows? But uh, that scene was really it it was very tender. Um, I thought the fucking uh, the flying scene was bad, though. I'm sorry. I really couldn't get into it. It was so fucking corny to me. I I, And just like all of a sudden out of nowhere. Like if we had seen in the previous film or like the beginning of this film, her be like, I think I can fly. Let me try and fail a couple times and it would be more believable. But to just like, you know, make the decision to kill your boyfriend for the good of the world and then jump into the sky and fly away was just so bad to me. It was so bad. But you're right. There are things there are things about the movie that were good. Um, I just think that like the the fucking putting all of that together did not work. And I think one of the main things that Patty Jenkins did wrong that Scott may have mentioned already is just letting scenes hang for way too long. Like there's some point where it's like, you got to end it and move on to the next thing or else it's just people get bored. And I thought that the movie was fucking boring because every scene was way too long. Yeah. I, I kept getting little, little pieces that I thought were interesting, but then they would ruin it with, a long, too long of a scene or a stupid premise or something. Uh, also, I, I got to be honest with you. I turned the movie on. And after the intro mall scene, I was like, really? 
this is what we're doing because this is i mean so the first movie i i still i rewatched it last week before i watched this and i still i still like it quite a bit i find it very charming uh and i find it there's camp in it but it feels like earnest to me whereas the camp in this one felt just fucking bad like the whole mall scene felt really really bad uh and i got kind of down about it but then there's a decent chunk um it, like i would say like early it's like i <laughs> for doing time frames it's like mid morning to like afternoon <laughs> of the film it's like i the whole like kind of building up of what the what the stone was and i was like this is kind of neat there's like oh it, it disappeared and there's a description on the inside and i was like oh indiana jones kind of we're gonna go look no we're not gonna dig into it okay cool we're just gonna say it's a god and fuck right off to the next thing all right cool and it just robbed me of all the components to it that i thought were interesting and gave me this kind of weird hodgepodge of like generic superhero movie but also they thought they were too clever for themselves like plot line wise with like it's not going to be a stereotypical ending to a superhero film and i just i was just disappointing really i wanted it to be better and i expected it to be better and i think i always fuck myself when i go in with higher expectations and that's exactly what happened i'll say this though like if I'm going to say something nice about it. And also something not nice about it in the same okay. sense. Okay, great. Uh, right. Well, yin yang. The way, the way that they explain the invisible jet is the only way that that could have possibly worked. Oh, true. Like, I forgot about because, that. Because their island is hidden by, by Zeus himself using some kind of magic. But, but again, yeah. like, again, like to, to touch on what Derek said about her, just like basically just telling her boyfriend, like, I have to let you go. And then just jumping into the sky. She also like made the jet go invisible on her first fucking try. But yeah. like she, she, but she, she had a throwaway line like I did this to a coffee cup once. Like, well, that explains it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they really kind of pro, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so they really kind of MacGuffin her powers in this, but it's so weird because she has the power to do these things. Like mm-hmm. if you if you know from comics, she had. But the, the way they present it makes it look like it's only for the purpose of the fucking story. It's like reverse stupid. It's like reverse entropy. Reverse oh, shit, all the we're powers. Back. <laughs> we're pulling it back, boys. Um, back out of the bowl yeah. and into our butts. <laughs> like she, she's she's got the blood of the gods in her in her and is therefore basically able to do whatever the writers need her to do, do you think at did? any given time. And it's fucking <laughs> shitty. Go ahead, Scott. That seems like it's going to be a bad one. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really bad. I'm not saying that one. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, no, but but it, this. This movie pulls, it pulls a Superman too, right? Like it pulls all of these tropes from all these superhero movies over the years, all DC movies. We get, we get the Clark Kent loses his powers uh, storyline from Superman two. You know what I mean? Where, where like he's living a happy life with Lois and he has to go back to the fucking cavern and get his shit back because Zod and his, and his, his goons come down. We get that nonsense in this. We get the Edward Nigma nonsense in, in Kristen Wiig's character development. Hot Edward Digma. I mean, yeah, yeah she, she is an absolute smoke. Fuck I'm, not Ed. About, I'm not talking about that that smoky <laughs> eye makeup on the hot topic version of Kristen Wig either. Um Yeah, it's just it I don't know, man. Pa- like 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 you said, Pedro Pascal had some really, really cool moments in this. Um I think it's a lot of the special effects were cool. Like I thought I thought the sequence where they were in the invisible jet, right, like flying through the fireworks, visually it cool. visually yeah. it looked really cool. Uh I don't know. It was a it was a Bollywood movie though. That's what it comes down to. It was a fucking Bollywood movie. The the like physics were just totally out of whack. And exactly they, like they Wonder did Woman that a bit with Yeah, sorry. No 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 no, no. go ahead. I I I, I was, completely was say, they they did that a bit with the first one. Like the physics feel a little weird and you just kind of like a I little? just kind of accepted <laughs> it. Well, I mean it's a superhero movie, so you got to give it at least yeah. a little you're watching completely made up fa- yeah. fantasy tales. But but the, the, yeah, I mean, the way she moves in the first one feels like weird, at least weirdly exaggerated, like you wouldn't expect her to. And they bring that back in this one, but they crank it up to 11 and it feels really off putting in some areas because of it. Like it's not, it's beyond what I even expected being introduced to it in the first movie. Did you guys yeah, also drink Drano at the missile scene? Did you guys <laughs> rush no. to your bathroom? <laughs> no, M- much like Spider-Man, like slinking onto Iron Man to get a boost. I didn't bother me that much, to be honest with you. It, amid- amidst all the other shit At happening Iron in that Man movie that I a actively bunch. hated. <laughs> a- amidst all the other shit in this movie that I actively despised, that didn't bother me all that much. When you brought it up, I was like, that, oh, yeah, that, um, that actually happen. hurts my feelings that you guys didn't hate it as much as I did. But it's OK. We can, move on. can we talk about how it, uh, uh, Gal Gadot is uh, an exceptionally um, 
great model and an exceptionally bad actress. I thought that yeah. her acting was so wooden and so bad in this movie. Um, I think that she's great at the pose. She's great at this. She's like, and she like looks good doing it. And you're like, oh, cool for like the still frame. But like when she talks, it's like, oh, like none of it sells at all. Uh, and even like all her scenes with Chris Pine, I feel like he's a he's a good actor. He's not great. Like he's not a fucking Academy Award winner. I don't know. Maybe he is. But but he but he's good. And not even was, Emmy nominated like Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, <laughs> that's why I, it, it, like all their scenes felt so disjointed because it felt like he was bringing it and she was just there being hot. And that was it. Um, and I'm not saying that to sound like uh, misogynistic or anything, but it, sh- her acting did not do it for me this time around. And again, I don't remember enough of the first film to really, I'm going to have to watch it, but yeah, uh, you do to say if it was like that in the first one, or maybe I just didn't notice it in the first one or whatever it may have been, but I thought her acting was fucking terrible in this movie. I actually thought she was better in this one than the first one. Okay. Interesting. So, I mean, you take that, there's no you way, know, honestly, but, as you, but I, I, just do it. Just do it. Go ahead. Just do it. Yeah. What are you doing? You can't but, start talking and then just go silent. Like, well, that. No, no, no. there's, there's no, there's no stakes, right? There's like, there's like, I mean, there are stakes, but they're, they're nonsense. The first movie had the emotional weight of a war. Whether you, right. g- whether you gave a shit about those characters or not, they were fighting. They were basically fighting Nazis, right? Smart, like, smartest thing they did in the first movie was base it around World War One. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, the scene, the scene where they go into the town and she destroys the sniper up in the tower and like saves the whole town. And then like later they're like out in that town, you know, it's snowing and people are dancing and playing music. That was an impactful yep. moment. Yep. That, that, that felt to me like, like a Zack Snyder like moment, but, but with, emotional weight not just the image the whole picture was there like you know actual I mean? hope and like inspiration yeah yeah like it was, yeah, it, it was good it was more than it was more than just something beautiful to look at which the irony is that a lot of times uh when she is on screen she is very rigid like like Derek said she she always looks incredible i've never seen her in anything but the wonder woman movie. so i don't i don't know whether yeah, me neither well i don't know whether that's the way the character is written like the, the way the way she was told to like because no, know, she's man. just not a great actress. I, sh- I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to be a dick. She's not. I mean, she was in like Fast and the Furious before she was cast as Wonder Woman. She's I did not know that. I I don't. I forget which one because I haven't seen any of the Fast and Furious movies after like two. But uh, unless you count I, the I mean, Israeli propaganda that she started because she was in a lot of that. Oh, uh, was she? <laughs> yeah, oh, that makes sense. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. yeah. She was like, wasn't she? Wasn't she enlisted for she a while? Was in the I think IAF, she did stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. No, he's. That's all fucking totally legitimate. Um. Yeah, she, I she don't know. She should drop a tactical I, nuke right on my penis. Just, <laughs> just right on the tip. <laughs> just the tip, though? Yeah. Well, Is it, it too it, much it, of a honking beefer to affect the rest of the shaft? Well, no, no. It would, it would hit the tip and just disintegrate my entire being. But that's how I want to go. <laughs> it, it'd be a good way to go, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's, wrap up, let's, let's wrap up final thoughts for Wonder Woman, if you have any. Uh, Derek, we'll, we'll go the order in which we spoke about the movie. Uh, final, final thoughts, final hatreds. Uh, final thoughts. I, I wanted to like it a lot more than I did. I actually really did expect this to be good. I didn't go in with high expectations. Like I never go into, uh, anything that I perceive as a, uh, popcorn flick thinking that it's going to like realign my understanding of fucking drama or, you know, I just go in trying to have fun. I couldn't even really have fun with this. Uh, initially, like I said, I tried to realign myself to go like, Oh, uh, they're going for sort of maybe a more kitty Indiana Jones type thing. Um, it, it, and it got me on board, like I said, for the first like third of the movie. And it just got so fucking goofy after that. It was too <laughs> fucking goofy for me to, to, to like keep up with it. Um, Patty Jenkins as a director, I think that she's capable of framing a scene. Um, she's capable of, of directing people. Obviously, she had a lot of talent in this. There was a lot of good acting. Uh, but overall, I, I would give it a I'd give it a five point five out of ten. <laughs> okay, Scott, how about you? Uh, I mean, I went with like very low expectations. I thought it was just me like a like a, a fun popcorn movie, and that's that's basically what I got. So like, I'm not I'm not really disappointed in anything besides the pacing. You know, I mean, like I had the same issues with the first one. Um, parts of it are rigid, parts of it are ridiculous, parts of it are cartoonish, but it takes place in in the the eighties, man. Everyone wore shoulder pads and had mustaches and mullets. You know, like from the, from the very first mall scene, it's obvious that this movie 
shouldn't take itself as seriously as it does, but also kind of doesn't take itself seriously at all. It's like a weird mix. It, it, yeah, it, very. It could it couldn't figure out which tone it was going to go for. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I I I had fun. I watched it. I had fun. Uh, for everything that didn't work for me, in spite of everything that didn't work for me, I still enjoyed it. Especially because I didn't pay a fucking dime to see it, so it's hard for me to it's hard for me to be hypercritical, knowing that like I didn't pay anything. Thank you, I mean? HBO Max. Yeah, really. Th- thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we love you. That whole Disney Plus episode. Don't fucking worry about that. Fuck them. We love you, HBO Max. <laughs> uh, rating. Uh, what rating would you give it? Uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it was if shocking. we had if we had to assign your nuanced take on the film. All your loves and hatreds, a numerical value that we can staple on billboards. Well, I, I don't like the way you said. I don't, I don't like the way you said nuance there, but there was a lot of sarcasm. In that. No, I meant it sincerely. <laughs> I was basically making fun of all the people who, you know, whether you have valid points of critique and adulation for a film, they still drill it down to a fucking number on Rotten Tomatoes that gets misinterpreted by folks. But uh, I'd say seven out of ten. It, it's a fun ride. If you if you t- if you go and try to take it seriously, you're going to hate it. But if you go in just expecting to kill two and a half hours and get a couple laughs out of it but you know fair i i that's actually higher than i expected you to rate that to be honest with you really and i yeah um i so here's my thing i feel like i'm untowardly like jaded towards this film because i did go in with the mistake of having higher expectations i usually don't i usually don't i've been crushed specifically by dc films before but by superhero films in general, I typically I get I get pumped up about it, you know, giant nerd about these kinds of things. Uh, and I feel like because of that, it's coloring my opinion a little more negatively than it normally would being the uh, the self-described unabashed optimist of the trio of us. But I overall, if I step back and look at the film as a whole, did I enjoy my time watching it? And the answer is yes, I did. Um, I, I had a lot of problems with it a lot. I cannot stress that enough. I had fucking piles upon piles of problems with this film, and I am disappointed in it because I expected more of it. Partly, partly my fault. Um, It was it's it's literally been in production for such a fucking long time. Was supposed to come out like six fucking months ago. I just feel like there's this build up and build up and build up, and you're like, oh, we're finally gonna get a proper superhero film in the middle of this pandemic, and then. It comes out and you're like, I just, I literally can hear the womp womp in the background as I'm watching it. It's like one long drawn out womp womp. Um, over the length I, of the film, just two and a half yeah, hours. Womp. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm, <laughs> I'm wax, I'm waxing poetic about all that. Really, just to say that, honestly, uh, I probably would go like six point five or six out of ten. I, 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 don't I like, even, I like this more than both of you. Wow. Well, like I said, I, I think I, I'm unfairly coloring my numerical value no, it's fair review. you're giving it higher than it deserves chris let me just tell you so don't nothing is unfair you did, about you what didn't you're ha- you didn't have fun at all though derek you didn't, you didn't have fun at all watching it honestly i really didn't i i, I wow, like right. i said like from the opening scene from the uh mall scene which was terrible guys it was not good uh i tried to adjust to that campiness of it every it's weird to go into an action movie like this and appreciate the action least of all because even in like the Marvel movies that I really hate. I love the action still like it's still even though it's green screen stuff. It's like fun to sort of behold and be, you know, bewildered by. It was the opposite with this film. Like it was it was so corny, so over the top. Like I said, the physics were just stupid that it was just laughable every time they were actually doing anything. The way some of the characters interacted with one another, that was the interesting part. Uh, sometimes most of the time still pretty bad, but. That's let me ask. The important and important question here. Do you think that your view of this film would be different had you seen it in a theater and paid money for it? Because this is kind of the unspoken thing in the room. It was, and Scott brought it up, I, I think, in the group chat before the movie came out. You're like, oh, when you play the movie, I think you said, like, it's kind of weird watching like a yeah. pole superhero film on a streaming service. And I didn't actually think about it like that until you said so. And honestly, by the time I started the film, had forgotten about it again until about 20 minutes in, my wife looked at me and went, this is weird, right? Like we're watching like one Roman on HBO Max. And I was like, yeah, I guess it kind of is. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you think it would have changed your opinion at all? That's, I know it's impossible um, to say. It, it, but- it is, right? And, that, and that's kind of my point. Like, that's actually a super fair question. I would like to shoot you down, but I can't because everything really is better in a, in, in a movie theater. Like it's. When you're in there 
and uh, the fucking sound is booming and the screen is as wide as the room that you're in and you have the yeah. shitty fucking popcorn and flat Coke. It's like, that's a part of the experience. It's really, it makes going to see a movie, even when the movie is bad, a fun experience. Like you almost love to go do it even, even when the movie sucks. So like that being said, like, would the experience be better in a movie theater? Almost certainly. I mean, that's just like, uh, that's, that's a thing people love as old as movies itself is going to see them in that setting. Um, but would it make the movie better? I don't think so. Do you, do you think it would have positively, uh, positively impacted your score of the film? My score? Uh, that's what I'm most interested in. Cause that's what I'm, that's what I'm having trouble yeah. figuring out in my head. You know what I mean? Like if like, I was in a movie theater, if I'm watching this action unfold on the big screen, do I, does it color it in a better light for me when I leave? See, I don't think so. Again, I, I, I think like the distinction here is like the experience itself would have been more enjoyable, but I don't think that like my opinion of the movie I saw would be any better. I, I think it would be about the same. I that, think you're giving yourself high praise. I think the action sequences like would be much better if it's not just on a 40 or 50 inch screen. I mean, like, like yeah. a lot of the spectacle is lost when you're watching it in your room. Like, like I, have a, I have a fucking 32 inch TV in my bedroom. Like I'm watching it on a 30. Like it wasn't meant for that. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So it's just, you, I have you a 65 all, you, inch. Not that we're comparing or anything. Not that that's like a metric. <laughs> of, in, in your be, in your bedroom, you do. Right. Okay, the bedrooms the bedrooms are oh. forty five. You're right, but okay, out here it's right. sixty five. It's right behind me. You see it? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. It's boom. curved, just like my dick. Just kidding. Straight <laughs> as an arrow. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. No, I, there's a really cheesy saying in like politics. Uh, I don't know where it comes from, but it might even it might not even be pro- politics. It might be like an old uh, prosecutor saying, but like sunlight's the best disinfectant for stuff like bringing oh, things to light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard that before? And I and I feel we like made it, a song called that, didn't we? I don't know. Uh, I feel like it sort of applies here to the movie industry because it's like if you're in the movie, I do think that the seeing this in, a, in the movie theater, big screen, sound booming, I would have come out painting it slightly more positively than I am currently. But I feel like seeing it in this intimate setting in your house, watching it like you would watch anything else normally for the first time has a negative impact on the not necessarily negative, but you're able to more easily scrutinize and pick out the flaws in the film. As opposed to what you might do going to see it in a movie theater. And I think that if nothing else, if they keep doing home releases like this, it, it might mean that we get better quality overall eventually out of these things. I don't fucking know. But uh, that's my optimistic hopes and dreams for <laughs> that genre. Um, okay. But isn't it, I don't hang have, on, before, I don't want to belabor the point too much, but it's like, I mean, really think about that. Like, just imagine we had all gone and seen this in theaters together again. I think what would have been significantly better is the actual experience because you walk in, you go see it, you get the shitty food. And then like on the walk back to the car, we're all saying, trying to squeeze in like our favorite parts and the parts that we thought were stupid as quickly as possible before we get to the cars. But that still has no bearing on the actual movie. It's just like you're with your buds and and you're like out for the day and it's Saturday and you're having fun. I don't think that that really like is a reflection on the production of the movie. Right. But and this is this is a good point. I'm glad I'm glad that I'm actually kind of glad we disagree. It's a good conversation. But you don't think that I'm not in glad giving we disagree. Your, I want you to agree with me. Agree with what I'm saying. <laughs> you, you don't think that in your review of the film, your mood during seeing it or the experience you had factors in in the slightest. You don't think that that bleeds in. In your head, I think it does. And I think it's unavoidable. I think it's like, you know, you're coloring your opinion from your perspective of when you how you saw it. Right. But I mean, I'm not in a bad mood when I'm home, you know, I like being Fair. home. This is my, this is my, my den, my den of Zen. Uh, okay. no, you Fair know what? I, I feel like, um, th- I feel like th- that's actually a pretty good point, but I, I don't know. Again, from the beginning, you said it's impossible to really say, and I feel like it that's is. the actual answer, but yeah. you know, who knows, but I see cool. what you're saying. It's like when you go into when you have that experience with it, maybe you're feeling more positive that you actually view it in a positive light as opposed to being holed up in your apartment during a fucking global pandemic 
trying to right. filch and scrape any fucking modicum of joy that you can from the inside of the fucking proverbial peanut jar. But I don't know. What a sentence that was. That was yeah. yeah that that was yeah. You just got. I feel, like, I feel like I was watching the the end of a like a Dennis Miller live episode on HBO circa like 1999. <laughs> I think that's an insult. Yeah. No, give me, no, give no, me Dennis no, no, Leary, was... not Dennis Miller, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, really, the only reason I even asked that question, and, and this is kind of my last point, because we're just kind of treading the same ground here. But when I walked out of Last Jedi, I thought f- more highly of it than six weeks later talking about it with folks. You know what I mean? Like I walked out. I don't know if that's true that's of everybody. That's super but, fair, actually. No, I'm, but I'm with there, you there are yeah. plenty of films I came out of the theater with my buddies and I'm like, ah, blah, blah, blah. And everyone's being so positive. And, you know, it kind of colors your opinion on things for at least a bit until you have time to rewatch it by yourself or digest it again. Yeah. Um. Anyway, does anybody, I'm surprised we went as long as we did. We're, we're basically at normal podcast length with far fewer topics with it being such a quiet week. So, um, anybody have anything else they'd like to go over before we wrap this this episode up? It's gonna be it. No, this is it. This is the end of the year potty. Oh, oh yeah, this is, our, this is our last one. Last potty of the year. Yeah, it's a, it's a wish I had something special here. planned. Now, all of a sudden, I just hadn't yeah, thought of that you. before. We'll, we'll yeah. see you guys next year. Should, should we? Should we do like? Should we do resolutions? <laughs> Got him. Um, I was just going to say something kind of uh, sappy and say that I, I know it's only been since September, but I have absolutely enjoyed my time doing the Cynical Nerd podcast with you boys very much. Uh, we didn't do like a Thanksgiving thing, but I'm very thankful for uh, just being able to, to shoot the shit with you boys every week. You know? and yeah, I, you're I know right. That had... was sappy. Please don't ever do that again. That was <laughs> too much. Yeah, I, feel, I feel like you're I feel like you're dying, but you're not going to tell us until it's about to happen. Like, <laughs> All right, boys, let's do it this way. Don't. <laughs> Skiing time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really you has to been move a blast yourself to the middle I'm... for that one. You have, you have to like rotate our boxes <laughs> when yeah. you do that bit, so that me and Derek are on both opposite sides of you. I, I'm I'm thankful for this too. It's been a, a good time, and I'm thankful for everybody who comes and hangs out and listens. It has been a good, good last uh, quarter of a very terrible year. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's been a bright spot. Um, anything to add, Scott? Before we sign out. Uh, I am I am thankful for your unabashed <laughs> uh, optimism in in the face of not only like deed list villains and superheroes, but uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Also it's thankful like, for Chris as long as we're focusing on Chris, he does all of the fucking like editing and putting together of every episode. Yeah, yeah. Just in case listeners didn't realize that Chris really really is the mastermind behind the podcast. So yeah, we we finish up usually around like what like eight or nine o'clock at night. Chris then edits audio to put it up by the next morning and then spends the next day editing video to put up the video yeah. version on YouTube. So while me and Scott just jerk off, like as soon as we're done, we just jerk off for fucking 36 well, that's, hours straight. Yeah. That's when what when I'm not me, on camera for the podcast, I'm just cranking it out 24 hours a day. <laughs> that's what gets me through the editing. They continually send me jerk off videos <laughs> to, to kind of, to fuel my, my, you know, editing. Yeah. No, I, Mid-com I, pictograph. Um, yeah. So, so, I, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we just like, <laughs> Sometimes Chris will just throw on like a Doors album and see where our where our, our load blowing syncs up with the music. <laughs> yeah, it's a great it's a great adventure. Uh, no, I mean, to be honest, I enjoy the editing portion of it. So it's it's not a big deal. This week is a little different. Typically, we are able to do it Sunday nights. This is a little behind the scenes for you guys. Uh, we do it early Sunday, like 530. I then have, you know, a couple hours to get it knocked out before midnight. Tonight, we're recording pretty late. So this is the audio version will still definitely go up. Tuesday at daily, like we said, the video is probably going to be the following day if I had to be honest with everybody. Uh, but I, I thank you for saying that. I, I appreciate it. It's nice to uh, nice to be nice to be noticed. Yeah, because we wouldn't do it. Like, can we like Scott and I would not do that part of it. So like if you didn't, it just wouldn't yeah, happen. It, so. it would just be it would be an audio. I can do audio, but I would never do the video. I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly whenever there they were early there's so I, you know year end we can talk about it there were times early on in the podcast where we would be talking about like oh and then at this point of the bit we can do this blah 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 and in my head i'm just i'm just like nope not doing that nope <laughs> i'm not i'm not finding the jokes an hour into a two-hour <laughs> podcast and moving the cameras around for a 30 second bit it's not fucking happening <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, all of those ideas ever were forgotten and never brought yeah. up again. So uh, you know, I'm, also, I'm also thankful for Derek's pee breaks and yeah. uh, and his 
I'm happy like, to keep doing un, it. Un, un, unrelenting cynicism, really, though, because like, <laughs> I, no, like, I'm not even I'm not even trying to be a dick, though. Like, I feel like t- talking to you guys about stuff. Like, I I I've always like I've always uh, digested media the same way. Part of it's probably ADHD, but I'm always so hyper focused on visuals or this or that. I never really have have broken things down and noticed things in the way that I have been recently since we started talking about them. Uh, I feel like it's been a lot of fun, man, to to, to kind of get inside of each of your heads because you both have completely different thought processes, and it's kind of changing the way that I like, you know, digest things now, like how 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 I look at stuff and how I watch things, and I, I've, I've honestly found myself enjoying things I never would have probably even watched before. Not the lighthouse, but uh, yeah, but fuck the fair. lighthouse. We'll get but, there. But, we'll but, get but, there. but some things, some things. That's the goal for 2022, baby. We'll get there. <laughs> to what you skipped the year 2022? Yeah, it's he, not going to happen in 2021. Stretch goals, baby. We're, stretch, we're going. We're going to the stretch next goals. One. <laughs> we need at least 52 more episodes under our belt before Derek, we can even begin to like the lighthouse for next Halloween. Can we go as them? Can we like, can we like find a way to make ourselves black and white oh, and go as them for Halloween? Absolutely. <laughs> we can. Absolutely. <laughs> we can. I will. I will 100% do that. But we gotta, we gotta figure out, we gotta practice. Just, we gotta practice our face paint. Yeah. Make, I just want to be the, you guys be the sailors. I'll be the mussy. You'll be the mussy. Yo, <laughs> yeah. yo please. A giant please. fucking mermaid pussy. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's that's all I'm gonna do. Like, is oh, we're all we're all lighthouse characters. So all, who's yeah, that supposed to yeah, be? Yeah, but we all have to be like in shades of black, like a grayscale. Like, we all have to be in black yeah. and white. Like, we have to figure oh, out how to do that. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, no, that's yeah. that would be fun. Yeah, that would yeah. be cool. Yeah. Scott, uh, I'm thankful will... for your rambling, uh, uh, mostly your sex sex capades. Yeah, they're uh, pretty fun. That just leak their way into every episode and and give us all kinds of joy. There are no sex capades. It's just it's just, just a joy. Stories. Just, <laughs> just coming and not coming. Yeah, like like just every every story I've told is just up. that 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 hook on the car door, but it's like, <laughs> you know, I I will and and just you know we're circle jerking at this point, but I That's do okay. enjoy reviewing things with you guys only because it's it's like a game to see like what your like Scott was saying what your brains picked out that I didn't like what so I tend to focus on certain things you know Derek tends to focus on certain things so it's always fun for me to. So like, you know, I was kind of digging into certain aspects of the Wonder Woman film and, and Derek will pick up on something else that I didn't. And those things are fine. I'll do one more. Just a joy. Oh, last for one of me the year. To, yeah, Fucking just milk that one, listeners. Just uh, pull one out right now. <laughs> it's, it's just a it's just a, a joy for me to, you know, hear what you guys pick out that I missed. And with that being said, thank you guys for listening. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Derek and Scott, for being here with me, as always. Uh, we'll do one more chill streak. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at TCN plays. Derek, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Dr. Gloom MD, which is D R G L O O M M D. You guys got me. On, you? Uh, sorry, you can find can me you on do it in a Southern accent. Cause you kind of started to, can you just do <laughs> it in a Southern <laughs> accent? <laughs> Y'all can find me on uh, Twitch, Twitter. <laughs> I'm also on Facebook gaming and I'm on, I'm on the YouTube. I am Swear Wolf with an E. That is S W E A R W O L F E. Very nice. Very nice. Swear Wolf with an E. <laughs> uh, you know, one could say that our podcast is at times rough around the edges. You might say sometimes that our podcast is a vicious circle. Uh, if Don't we fucking a- <laughs> do it! <laughs> <laughs> if we were a pill, you might say we we're harmful if swallowed. I hate <laughs> And with that being said, <laughs> thank you for being here. Episode 14 of the Cinegona. We'll see you in 2021 with just more shit sandwiches every week. So thanks, guys. Was that <laughs> another? Was guys. that a third Dane Cook reference? Was that three? <laughs> it's pretty right. It was burst fire. <laughs> <laughs>